Are women selfish for making men wait for sex? Should the 90 day rule exist? If women are holding out on sex, should men hold out on something too? Hmm. Tonight is part three of our series on love, dating, and relationships in 2021. It's time to jump off live. We are truly Jeffrey Smith and joined by the rest of Team Jump Off. DJ, aka that dude. JD, and Johnny Dane. We're also joined tonight by our special guests, better yet, honorary members of Team Jump Off. We have the amazing Dr. Zoe Fallen, the most coming from North Carolina, and from the channel Mike. Philippine Journey. YouTube star Mike E is in the place to be. As What's you, up? Yes, sir. As you're watching tonight, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can check us out on Zingo TV channels 249 and 250. And if you're on the go, you can find us on your favorite podcast streaming app. And as always, audience, please be sure to keep your comments clean so we can post them on the screen. So without further ado, DJ's going to kick it off. What's popping that dude? You did. I think he's Sorry, on mute. Yeah, yeah, I was on mute. Sorry about that. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> man. Uh, my, it feels like that Jeff was giving us the 90-day rule here because we ain't seen him in a minute, man. So welcome back, <laughs> welcome back to the show. Did I sound? Do I sound okay? Is yeah, everything good now. Is Get everything back. in place? Yeah. Yep. That whole intro, you can hear me fine? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it only messes up when you do the intro. That's it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what <laughs> John is on mute right now, making fun of me. This is real. Yeah, mute on yeah. folks. <laughs> oh goodness! Should I do the intro again? No. No. Uh, no, no. Uh, no. We're good. They, wow. You can, that, this is your equivalent of ninety day rule right now. This, this, that's ridiculous, man. That's two. That's two times in a row. But let's get let's get the proceedings proceeding. It's okay. Yeah, it's all good. So we're continuing talking about these tough discussions. We brought back Mikey. We got Doctor Zoe here, and this week we're gonna we're gonna go back to the stuff we talked about last week. There's so many questions I have here, but since we have Jeff, grateful actor, back into the the mix again in here again, we want to talk about this 90 day rule. This came about because I was watching Think Like a Man again. And from that, I started going down the rabbit hole. I'm like, man, I remember when I was younger and women were trying to make me wait, you know, trying to get some, you know, try to make sure I was patient, see I was worthy of it. But since we're all grown now and dating this, we're not dating, but we know people on this panel are dating, you know, and there's people who are watching here in this scene here. So here going in 2021. Let's just go down the line. I'd like to go ladies first here with Dr. Zoe. How do you feel about the 90-day rule, making your man wait for it? What you got for me? I just don't even like the idea of the, the rule concept, right? I think it, it really has to be individualized. And I think sex is a form of communication. So let's say you, wait, let's say you make a man wait 90 days. And then now he expects it. But what if you feel like you don't really want to? You know, I just, I just don't know. It's, I think there's a lot to, you know, rely on it. Because maybe after a while you feel like, okay, after 45 days, you might feel like, okay, we're going somewhere. Or I feel a connection. Or I feel like I just want to have sex. I think we put so much pressure on sex. Um, I think it should be something that is, is special. And I think it should be. But it's, just a, it's an intimate act that people should use as a way to strengthen their communication and relationship. So I'm not really a fan of the 90-day rule. I also think that, I don't know, I, I really think women are adhering to this because of what people have put on in the media. But we remember when Erica Badu was celibate and Common was celibate and we found out Erica Badu was getting some on the side. So I just think that <laughs> we need to be on the same page in relationships. And sometimes when we set these rules and people are abiding by these rules, what we see as rules up front, we don't know what's going on behind and we just deteriorate communication. So I think people should just talk about it. And um, when they're at a good place in their relationship, take the appropriate measures and safe sex is the safest sex um, and just go from there. Wait a minute. So during our House of Blue days, you're telling me that I didn't know this. I know I thought Common was out there, but I know he was celibate and Miss Badu was still swinging. Wait, she was. She was. She was. When he was wearing, remember he was wearing the crocheted hull, crocheted pants face? Yeah, he was being yeah, yeah. supposed to be celibate, but she wasn't. She wow. was not. Well, yeah. 
Oh, oh, wow. I just lost respect for comment on that one. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, 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 on this. <laughs> I was not prepared for that before I was going to swing to Jeff here, that comment no. was on that simp stuff here. Yeah. So, Jeff. That simp stuff. Wow. <laughs> hey, Wait, hey, didn't, didn't, didn't Tommy make your song go after that? <laughs> Man, dude, you know, yeah. you know, matter of fact, he did say hot sex in the bathroom in that song. You're that right must there. have yeah. been um Dr. Zoe, that must have been during the electric circus album phase then. Yeah. When he was, he was crocheted out and all that yes, stuff. Yes, during that crochet phase. Yeah, That's but I digress. Crochet. I digress. Yes. <laughs> so Jeff, what you got for me on this 90 day, man? Um, I echo some of Dr. Zoe's sentiments. I believe that whenever you start to say rules. You know, this is what I'm. This is the rule that I'm putting in place. I feel like when you when you lay down certain quote unquote rules like that, you're you're building walls as opposed to building bridges. Um, I do think that every relationship is different, and <clears throat> especially from a sexual perspective, things can be fluid. I think that it's not a good idea when you get into a relationship with somebody. And you start off by saying, "What I'm not going to do. What I'm not going to do is have sex with the you know before ninety days. What I'm not going to do this. What I'm not going to do is that." So. Talk more about what are you going to do in this relationship? What what are we going to work on as opposed to you just speak to the affirmative as opposed to speaking to the negative? And that and that's the best way that I can that I can sum that up. Now, for some people, that may be um something that they, that they feel like they want to really stick to and, and abide by, and I can respect that. But again, with a lot of these topics and these conversations that we have, we have to look at the subtext underneath it and behind it. So if somebody is saying they they want to wait 90 days, what's the rationale behind it? And I'm sure there are some wonderful rationales out there. There's probably some some empty rationales behind that too. So I think communication is key. And just just remember, if you want to <clears throat> find your quote unquote soulmate, then you need to focus on building bridges as opposed to building walls. That sounded like a very, very PC. Nice answer there, Jeff. So let's, that's my answer. I, I, hear, I hear it. I hear it. So before I go to Mike here, I'm kind of curious here. Before you was in, you're in your successful, uh, happily marriage that you are in right now. Have you been put in that 90 day box? You say have I? Yes, you. No. No. Where have someone ever asked you to wait 90 days? No. Oh man, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. You ain't been put in the scent box. Let's no, I, I, and I think too, it's all about the energy that you put out and the communication that you put out. I mean, you know, that 90 is an arbitrary number. You, you know what I mean? But if you have that, 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 that communication, that open and honest communication um, from, from the jump and you know where people stand, then, you know, you're able to navigate those types of situations. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hear that. So I'm a, I want to go to Mike here because I know Mike has, he he has a very very strong opinionated uh, <laughs> on this one here from the previous. <laughs> one. So thanks for coming back here, Mike. What you got for me, man? You, you know, um, you have to respect what a woman says. If a woman says that you know I need ninety days, you give her ninety days, and there's nothing wrong with that. But one thing that I always will counter to that with a woman and and let's just remove the part of it being a 90 days. Some girls are going to say, I want to wait three days. You know, the, these girls, sometimes girls have that three day rule or the three date rule. We'll say, right. Um, you have the 30 days. It, it's, it, you know, that's just a number thing. My question is, it also depends on the man. If he's willing to wait, my thing is that the woman can go ahead and say, right. You know, you have to wait, let's say a month. Okay. If a woman says, wait, you have to wait 30 days for this. The thing though, that goes with that is that fine. I'll respect that. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stick around. Because just like with Jeff was saying is that what's the context of why they're saying that? There's going to be some women that says, well, there, there's a lot. There's women that are going to say something like, well, I want him to work for it. You know, you're going to hear a girl, I want, I want him to work for the prize. Okay. The thing, though, is at the end of that 30 days, that 90 days, what's the assurance of the man that he's going to end up being with her? I just feel that sometimes a lot of women nowadays use it as a way to be able to test the man to see, you know, let me see before he messes up before I give this to him. So I don't feel like I'm a person who just gave it up. The thing, though, is when when guys have to wait, right, you know, when it's, for the women that says, for example, 
because I want to, I want him to work for this, right? That's literally what they're saying. I wanted him to work for what's down there. You know, that's just perceived value. The thing though is what's going to happen 90 days from now, you know, oh my God, I'm about to get some blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden you finally get down to the prize that she says is a prize. And all of a sudden looks like a Cracker Jack box that exploded. That looks like roast beef after somebody just put in some, you know, a firecracker in it. Then all of a sudden, what is that supposed to be a prize now all of a sudden? Wow. So what is it? Is there is there going to be a buyer's remorse that's going to happen with that? Because sometimes a lot of women, a lot of women will say that, you know, it's the bomb diggity down there. But then the truth is, it's a lemon. So, my, <laughs> you know, so can I return to sender? Can I all of a sudden now, can I get return on my investment that I, I got my 90 here? days back? <laughs> like I want it back. <laughs> my time. And the thing goes, if if within those ninety days, then all of a sudden, you know, she decides, well, you know what, he's not worth it. Let me go ahead and dump him, right? Um, that is a lot of investment a man gives. I'm not saying investment to get that is, but the thing is, all of a sudden, he doesn't get anything. My thing is, is a woman willing to tell a man, I'm willing to pay for every single date that we go out until that 90 day comes so that I know that, you know, we're there, but women out there are not willing to spend money on a date. They want the man to spend 33% of women have admit per studies have submitted that they go on dates with men so that they can eat good food. It's a real study that's been put in place. So that's my big problem with that is that what is there, you know, don't say that that's the price. Just like what Jeff said, what else do you have to bring into the table other than that? And that's, that's my problem with sometimes a lot of women kind of use that. And I, I get it. Depends on what your, you know, your, your, how your upbringing is. And I'm sorry, if you gave it up to a guy within one week and you tell me that you want me to all of a sudden wait 90 days for it, you can't do that anymore. You just can't. Now, if you want to do it, I'll let you be, but I'm not going to stick around. You know, I'll give you an example. Like, I, you know, I remember, the, you know, the, the woman that I married, my ex-wife, right? I remember I used to take her at this one place all the time because when we first started dating, I took her at this wine bar, you know, cheese and wine bar, go there all the time. And then finally, when we're together, we're finally together. She says, you know what? I'm going to pay for this one. Then all of a sudden the check came and she's like, oh, my God, that's how much you've been paying? Like they don't understand, they, they don't understand the investment that goes with it. I'm not saying that I'm paying for playing. That's not what I'm about. What I'm saying is just like what, what else do you have to offer than that supposedly Cracker Jack, you know, prize? I mean, just look at Cracker Jack boxes. Back in the days, nice prizes. Nowadays, it's like paper. So what's your perceived value? So Man. that's my, that's my take on that. I got to say you, you gave the line that's called foodie calls. That's what women are doing nowadays. <laughs> Foodie calls. <laughs> Foodie calls, Jeff. That's right. See, when women are, you know, want to make a guy wait or they're not really interested in them, but they hungry, they got a Rolodex of men who they'll go and reach out knowing if they're going to get a meal from them, a la the foodie call. The man ain't getting no loving, but he's dropping that car so she can get fed. Foodie calls, fellas. That's what's going on in the game right now. That's what Mikey's talking about. John. How do you feel about the 90 day rule on just making cats wait? Is there even even a reason to even wait for the cookie? Man, a lot of good concepts going on here, man. I'm listening to everybody. Very valid point. I like how Dr. Zoe started it off, man. She, she you know, she hit it home. That's a that's a whole lot of pressure. 90 days. 90 days is a is a long time. I think after 90 days, you become a re-virgin. You a virgin again if you wait 90 days, but from, from from a spiritual standpoint, anybody knows me, knows that I'm a spiritual guy. Uh, and we're supposed to wait until we're married, right? Um, but we're all under construction. And sometimes that drywall needs some nails in it. You know, so we, we're a work in progress. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Steve Harvey talked about it, 90 days. You know, he... <sighs> I, 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 I really like Steve Harvey. I love Steve Harvey, man. He he's a very inspirational guy. He's man. He said so many great, wonderful things that I've been able to uh, adopt his philosophies and whatnot, but he wrote these books for women. And, uh, 
he kind of created a lot of uh, unrealistic ex expectations. Now, here's the thing. You don't get a green light from a woman until she gives you that green light. You can't get it until she says you can have it, period. You know what I'm saying? So any man that think he can, you know, finagle his way or uh, force his way into getting that, man, just just kill that. That's, that, that's dead. You can't have it until a woman says so. I want to put that out there. But 90 days is a very long time. Um, sometimes, and I, and I get it too, like sometimes women have this notion that um, if they make a man wait, he'll respect them more. Uh, Mikey says something, you know, as far as like the last guy, you know, you want me to wait 90 days, but the last guy didn't have to wait nine hours. You know what I'm saying? It just, it just doesn't make sense. We're all adults. We're all grown. Sometimes you can really be vibing with a person and them whole, all the rules that you might have created in your head, all the list and everything. This person got to have this, that, that look like this, feel like, the, you know, skin got to be this color and all of that. All of that goes out the window, man. When you really get to start feeling somebody and it, it may take a short period of time, it may take longer. Man, I say go with what you feel. Go with what you know, because you might miss out on something. You might miss out on something trying to wait a 90 day rule. And like you said, you know, there's not one woman that I know of that's willing to pay for every single meal, Mike, for every single meal for 90 days. I don't know that one mom, woman unless she's a sugar mama cougar. There's some sugar mama cougar. Some SMC <laughs> wow. there. She got to sugar mama cougar. Where they yeah. at? Go to Arizona, man. There's a lot of those. I've been, there. Have, I've been there. <laughs> hey, look, we I've, I've been used by app. Cougar many times. <laughs> you might got to create an app called Sugar Mama Cougar uh, Locator. Well, <laughs> 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 all the cats from Sugar Mama Cougars are, but you know, that's how I feel on it, man. But you got to respect people. You got to respect women. You got to respect men. If a man is not willing to, you know, wait 90 days, women, you got to respect that. You know what I'm saying? But I think every, every, reason or whatever the reason is behind making a man wait for 90 days or however many days it should have just cause behind it and you can't you can't have been a super freak for that last guy and then try to make the next guy pay for you giving it all out to that last guy by making him wait 90 days that's just not fair so go with what you feel go with what you know let it flow and then let it go so <laughs> are you saying that the next man let's say if you are the next man you shouldn't have to pay that 90 day tax on a used car that's no longer brand new. Is that what you're saying? What, that, that, uh, uh, what I'm saying is this. Okay, okay, so <laughs> I hear what you're saying here. Is I know you're gonna that's gonna be taken the wrong way. Here. Yeah, we're gonna let we're gonna let us we're gonna let, 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 let us speak on in a minute. Let, let me let me say this, this right that people want to put a let's say women in this conversation want to put a tax, I say a longer period of time to see if that man is justified for you know the goods for your body for your sexual intimacy things of that nature right but let's keep it 100 here why am i paying a higher tax than the last man who was a piece of crap why do i gotta pay this higher threshold and put it on there like that so that's why i was saying that john people are paying taxes here basically for the next man well, is, that, is that even right so i don't want to go to jd but let me go to zoe because she did not like that here and i see jeff raise his hand so let me go to the woman I, I can wait though i can wait to say okay, okay, real quick. Let me quick. This, oh before you go to dr zoe real quick uh just to answer your question um i want to talk about it last show we really didn't have a whole lot of time but in a lot of situations that next man not just with sex but period that next man that good man that deserving man is paying for the things that that last man and many others did or didn't do. Women, women, you got, and men too. It's cats that do that too. Y'all got to stop doing that. That next man should have a clean, clear slate. You carry baggage and luggage from that last relationship, that's dead weight going into the next. And that could cause all kind of turmoil and all kind of problems. Y'all need to discuss it and talk about it. Yeah, but... That next man should not have to pay for what the last man or men therefore did. Start it. We're going to go to Zoe. And I said about a tax is because Mikey gave a great point. I know it goes both ways here, but he said when you go down there and he gave a description that doesn't need to be described in the lower extremities below. But if you see something that's not right, I'm using that analogy as a used car. And why do I got to pay the higher fee? Zoe, 
you almost about to slap me through the screen here. So what I'm you just got? wondering. I'm like, there's so many problematic statements here. That mm -hmm. as the, the solo woman here, I just want to start with a couple of them. One is that the idea that what the woman did in her last relationship um, sexually, how does the new relationship, how do you know what she's doing sexually? Are, are we discussing this? Like, I mean, I, I know that you may make assumptions that she was having sex, but how do you know how long it took? How do you know what that relationship was? How do you know the extent? And how do you know what she learned from it? Maybe she decided that based on how I probably, maybe I didn't take time to look at the red flags and maybe I didn't get, take time to connect better. I'm gonna take things a little bit more slowly. And I do believe, and when I, when I was in my twenties dating, I always had my money in my pocket. Now, what I would do is I would do the slow reach. Let me get, and then I would slowly reach for the check and the man would go, oh, no, 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 I'll get it. And I'm like, are you sure? No, you, you, my have, money back. you, my have, money back. Yeah, you have done it with me before, Zoe. I ain't gonna front. You the slow that. reach? Yeah, you've done that with me. Before. It's really slow. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it's it's almost it's, like a. It's it's like quicksand. It's it's yeah, it's a very slow approach, and so but guess what? If the man says, uh, yeah, yeah, then I have my money. I came with my money. Maybe talk to my purse. Maybe talk to my bra. I have some money on me because at the end of the day, I don't want to have to walk home and I don't want to have to fight a man off later. That's the reality of where we're dealing with. But the idea that I have to now justify that if I had sex with a last guy earlier, I got to keep that going. No, no, no. Each time what we're saying is, and I hear you guys saying you should go with how you feel, but if the woman feels like I want to get to know you better. Maybe she heard some things about you, or maybe she thinks you have a reputation. She's trying to see what you're really about. I hear people talk about soul ties all the time. And the idea that if you have sex too soon, you get all these soul ties. I don't believe in any of that. I truly believe though, that you can miss a lot of cues. You can miss or um, not even miss, but ignore red flags because you get caught up in the sex. The sex is good. You know, people say you get digmatized. And next thing you know, you don't realize, he, you know, I notice he's always doing this or, oh, well, that's kind of cute. But the same things that you ignored come back later. So some women do it so that they can have clarity of thought so that I can see you for who you are without, you know, muddying the waters. Now, does it need to be 90 days? I don't think so. But I think that women and men and you know, to make sure we're inclusive, even in the same sex relationships, I think it's important that each person in that relationship takes the time to learn the other person. Now, some folks have experience and they can do that in you know three weeks. Other people need more time just because they're coming in with judgment about each other. Maybe they've been on your social media and they think you're a hoe. They might take more time to get to know you. But the idea that what I did, so if you go out with, with, with a woman who's married, who was divorced with kids. So you know, you got kids. I know you've been having sex now. So now like what I'm supposed to, <laughs> I'm supposed to have sex is because you see kids. It That might not be it. I might need to get to know you in a different way. I may need to know what your values are because you're going to have to come around my kids. So it's a matter of what do I need to feel comfortable? And if I need time, that's what you should give me. Now, if you are not comfortable with that, you want to see other people. Well, I believe I'm, I'm amazing. So take your time. You're not going to find me out there. But in the meanwhile, I'm still going to take the time that I need. That's all I'm saying. But the, the transactional nature, the taxes, and if you were a free class time, you better not come with this pious thing now because I know your track record. We got to <laughs> let each situation be unique now. <laughs> well, you know, I, I have my thoughts on that, that you, you want to just want to put that to the wayside. Before I get to my thoughts, though, JD has been waiting patiently over here and everything. So, JD, what you, what you got on that? I mean, are, are you paying the tax? We've been waiting in the past 20 paid the tax 24 minutes and 18 seconds right now. And everybody is on here talking about this and that. And oh, it's okay to wait. Oh, it ain't okay to wait. Okay, first off, you're BSing because I'm gonna bring it down to the to the brass tax, as they say. <laughs> if she's worth it or if he's worth it, you're waiting. That's the bottom line. I don't care. Okay. I mean, if she's a, a six and somebody <laughs> that you don't really give a darn about, eh, you might not be willing to wait that 90. But if she's a 10 and somebody that you had your eye on for weeks, months, years, somebody that's been your obsession, you <laughs> waiting a 90, you waiting a 120 to 180. It's, it's all about value. It is about value of the person that you desire. If you really want it and you really feel that that person is somebody who you want to be with long term, or somebody that you want to hit long term, 
you will wait. To me, that's the bottom line. If it's somebody that you don't value, no, it's not going to be worth waiting 90 days for it because it's not going to because you're assuming that it's not going to be that good to begin with. And that reward isn't going to be worth the quest. But if she were questing for it, if she were going for all the achievements, you waiting to 90. Just, just go ahead and say it. You waiting to 90. Waiting to 120. Oh, don't shake your head, Mike. <laughs> no, don't shake your head. Okay, who's who's okay? If your ideal person were to appear <laughs> out of thin air, right behind that blue light on your screen, Mike, and she showed up and said, you know what, Mike? I really like you. I dig you. I'm I I'm I would do anything for you, but we got to wait 90 days. You telling me that the person that is the ideal woman that you could put together in your head, you're not going to wait 90 days for that? Two part answer. Number one, when you first said about if she is if she looks like the person that um, could be a good person, like if I know if I know a little bit more about her and I and she's could be the potential long term person, then maybe I can push through a little bit. But like you said, if she's like that perfect nine to 10, whatever, and she tells me you're going to have to wait 90 days for this, I am not going to be simping over somebody for 90 days, hoping that I'm going to get some because it's going to go both ways within those 90 days. What's going to happen? She can literally say, I'm done with you. Actually, this is not going to work out. How many times that you, we all know that, you know, that happens. Women will make a decision. It's not going to work out. Then you wasted your 90 days. And I think that's, that's a wrong thing for a man to actually do that for himself because he demotes himself. He, 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 he loses his own value that he waited that long for something. He didn't get it. It's going to, you know, that, that I think is wrong, but okay, fine. When it comes to somebody who's potentially a good person, how do you know she's a good person if she just showed up? Like, there's so many times where I have girls saying, like, you know, I'm beautiful. And all I can say is, like, look around you. There's beauty everywhere. There's beautiful, ideal women everywhere. What makes you different than the rest? Going back to what do you have to give more than just your beauty? Because I'll give you till what? You're 35? This is to me, this is more of a self-centered sort of um, thing. If this person is your ideal, why would you wait or why would you roll the dice for somebody else? If you got that 10 and you know that the only thing that you need to do is wait 90 days, why would you roll the dice and say, uh, you know, I don't know if it's worth it. I might as well see what's coming up next down the street. Maybe this maybe this 6.27 might give me it on, uh, you know, day four. Because. Because I know myself and I can get a nine anywhere on another place if I want to. Okay. That too, JD. Okay. And let me ask this too. You're saying that you're mm -hmm. this is your dream woman or whatever scenario you yep. put out here. If she yep. waits 90 days for you to pull your wallet out, that's my follow-up question here. We talking about waiting 90 days here. Is any woman in their entire life here gonna wait 90 days for a man to spend any kind of splurge on them? Not day 91, we say, All right, then I'm with, I'm good. We're not longer going Dutch. Well, I'm, I'm going to pay for this meal now. Is any woman going to stick around for that? Because what we got to remember here is that there's values to the different sexes. We are putting more value on the women's sex and the body. Women's putting more value on our wall and our resources. So if we pull our resource the same way we put that, they pull the sex away. Who's who's sticking around, J.D.? Who's sticking around? Um, I'm going to tell you, no one's sticking around. There's I, I don't I see. I don't. Maybe maybe I'm an idealist. Maybe I'm an idealist. There is no one. I, I feel baby, like I feel baby. like Has there is a such thing as true love. And if that person is your person and you know that and you you truly believe that it's going to work. I believe if you cast all these other things over to the side, that that true love is going to shine through that that is going to be there. You know, maybe I'm just this guy with, you know, I got hearts in my eyes right now. And, you know, uh, I got somebody whispering sweet nothings in my ear at all times. Her name is Katie. But um, <laughs> if I truly feel that you if you meet that right person, that it's worth waiting. Like, I mean, I don't necessarily feel like I would wait. I don't think I waited 90 days. Ooh, probably share Ooh. too much. But I do. <laughs> but. I think that if you if if that person is worth it and if you view them as somebody who is worth that type of investment in, I don't see the problem with it. I don't I really don't see the problem with it. 
Hey, before I go to Jeff here, I just want to say the chat is popping right now. So we yeah, it really we, is. We see the questions here. We're gonna to get to y'all questions a little bit here. We'll, we'll take a break in a little bit here. But Jeff, I I, I see you. You're you're marching at the bit here. You, you even raise your hand. What, I mean, what you yeah, got like I'm in like I'm in yeah. Like yeah I'm in we're, we're, like we're in third grade classroom. So teacher, teacher, what you got for me, bro? Yeah, yeah. I I guess that my with my own personal experiences, I I, I must. I guess I have a different perspective. I, I've always um, approached and, and tried to approach any type of relationship from as, as an organic um, standpoint as possible. And I have been fortunate enough to have relationships where it wasn't these, because I'm, I'm hearing you talk about, okay, the, the you know, if I put the pocketbook away for 90 days, are you going to be able to handle that? I have not been in relationships with women where it was okay. I'm the man. I, I, you know, I'm the, I'm the uh, person that has the bag, and I'm going to be paying for X, Y, and Z. And this is what I'm doing because I'm the man. Then you're the woman, and this is your role, and this is what you do here. I haven't been in relationships like that when it's just so much posturing that that goes on. The relationships that I've been in, and obviously the one that I'm in currently is my best relationship, has been a situation where. Things have just kind of flowed organically. There's been conflict, obviously, but it it, it hasn't been as much as many. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to see how to word this. It hasn't been as many s- things that are like so set in stone. Well, if I'm gonna do this, then you go do this, and if you do this, then I'm gonna do rules this. and regulations. Like, yeah, rules and regulations, man. Like it, I I can't really explain it because maybe it's something that can't be quantified in words, but. You have to approach things from an organic standpoint and you have to you have to be open. I hear a lot of, well, this is what I'm not going to do. Or I hear a lot of, well, I got options over here so I can do this. Like, just try to be as open as possible. And if it don't work out, then it don't work out. That, you know, that that goes without saying. But I just feel like when we go into these situations and, and I'm echoing my original comment, when we go into these situations with certain expectations of how things are going to be or, or or expectations of how things are not going to be, then you set yourself up for failure. Stay open. The woman may say, I got a 90-day rule. You, you have conversations about that. Maybe that rule, that quote-unquote rule stays in place or maybe that, maybe that fizzles out because you realize, hey, I had this 90-day wall up and you know what? This person is worth it. I'm not going to follow through on my original intent. People do change and things grow and and mature throughout the process as well, too. I just see so many um, stakes in the ground, (laughs) you know what I'm saying, and and unwavering things. And you have to be open, man. Be fluid. You know, that's that's all. That's the thing. Men want to be open and fluid. (laughs) (laughs) John code switching. (laughs) <laughs> John was ready, boy. <laughs> now I'm taking I'm taking up all of this in. I'm so glad I don't have to wait 90 days anymore. <laughs> I'm so glad, man. I don't know who, who was gonna talk next. I didn't I didn't or was it me? Hey, hey John, it's been a minute, man. What you got? Okay, so so I'm gonna be transparent and share something with you. Please got. be transparent. Okay, so obviously you guys know I'm married, we're not uh married to the woman of my dreams. Uh, what JD was saying uh, earlier, as far as you know, if that person is that that person that you're looking for, that you've been you know wanting, I can I can relate to that because that's that's my wife. Uh, however, she you know when we first met, uh, yeah, I courted my wife. I courted my wife. You know, uh, if, if you believe in uh, uh, astronomy and and signs and all of that, I'm a Scorpio. I'm a Scorpio. Uh, a lot of people understand. Or make the notion that Scorpios are very sexual creatures. I don't know if that's true or not, but I am a Scorpio and I'm a sexual creature. <laughs> um, so with that being said, um, I'm also a gentleman. I'm also a gentleman. Uh, and I and I believe patience is a virtue. I use that philosophy and different principles, you know, period in life. But uh, you know, when I first met my wife. Uh, we took some time, you know, we discussed that communication is, is key. Um, I, I took on dates and all of that. You know, I, I didn't make her pay for anything, uh, but she was willing to. She was willing to. Um, if you really vibing with somebody, the, 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 what, the scenario that J.D. put up earlier is, is one scenario. 
But if you're meeting somebody for the first time, you don't know if that person's your dream woman or man or not. It takes time to get to know that, right? Well, some people fall in love at first sight, you know? Um, we took our time. We developed a friendship first. We developed a relationship. I couldn't tell you how long it took before we got there, but I'm going to tell you this. Me being who I am, uh, if I'm really feeling a woman like I was feeling my wife, if we put up some type of stipulation that, hey, we're going to wait this long or whatever, it's probably not going to happen. It's not going to happen because if that vibe is that strong, I go off vibes. If that vibe is that strong, man, we're going to be pulling you know, pulling my hair out to get to it. We, it's just going to happen. And that's, and that's what happened. It happened. So fast forwarding it real quick. What we did do prior to getting married, because we would get together some years before we actually got married, before I put a ring on. I liked it, so I put a ring on. Um, we did a 30 day rule. We did a 30 day. We said, you know, we're going to stop right here. We had the preacher come by. He's reading us scriptures out of the Bible and everything. We, we said, you know, we're going to stop for 30 days. I'm going to tell you this at the end of that 30 days, but Jeff was, <laughs> and Dave was at my wedding. You know why y'all had to wait on us? At the oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey. We'll, we'll imagine. We'll, we'll imagine it. Don't don't get. We don't want you to be in trouble no, later on, man. No, I ain't gonna get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we talked about it. Communication, right? Hey, man. Thirty days was a long time for me. It was a long time for her too. So, I'm just saying, man. You know. So, I just wanted to share that with you all. You know. It just it just it's, it really goes with those individuals. <laughs> Communication is key. If y'all don't have an understanding on why you waiting, if you don't know what you're waiting on, it could be a problem. It could be a problem, man. So, you know, just up to the individuals, man. Do what man. you want. You grown though, man. John, that's that's some heat there for, for what you <laughs> just dropped yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to say a few things here. We're gonna get to the chat here, people. Man, it's blowing up here. I appreciate people who come and check us out every Wednesday, man. It's such a beautiful thing here. I want to put this question on the screen because this really piqued my interest from Tara here, where she says someone might wait ninety days, but would they be dating exclusively? I can see people dating others during that time as well. That is the main, that question right there is the main reason why I wanted to talk about this tonight. Because when women impose this 90 day rule, are you exclusive? And if you're a guy, you're exclusive, is it worth the wait? Because what happens ladies, if the man is not exclusive and you've been waiting 90 days and then you say, well, I made it 90 days and look at us, we're doing good. And he's over here, he's exercising his options. What is he saying? Yeah, she's a good woman, make me work 90 days. But on Tuesday, I'm going to talk to Lisa. Oh, I mean, I might hang out with her, have coffee with her on Thursday. We can just chill and kick it. But on Saturday, there's Michelle. Then 90 days come, day 91 comes. All right, then she puts it in. And then, all right, then I might chill with her now because I see what's up. Do, do you see how that's a recipe for disaster? I understand what JD was saying. If this is the one, you won't wait for it. And I understand, JD, Jeff, you were saying how this is communication. This is the best relationship you had, and, and it's kind of flowed that way. But what about for the rest of the men who wait 90 days and then after the fact that 90 days and then maybe they don't get nothing because they were on a foodie call the entire time? <laughs> and on the fact that you wait 90 days and let's get to it, the sex is trash. What, what, what I mean, there, there are so many things that come about waiting for something that is it really worth waiting for at the end of the day? I know that may sound like a jacked up way. I, I preference that there, you know, but, you know, people treat sex differently nowadays, unfortunately, than we do now. And that comes also with women, too. So I will state it to this here. I'm going to go to the chat here. Everything that I said here, does that make sense that what's the point of waiting when if you have options? If you know the other man has options too, because I've seen so many women in these Facebook groups be say, it worked out for me. As your man, did it work out for him? Well, let's who's, just be honest. Mikey? Let's, yeah. let's just be honest. Most men cannot have multiple options. Let, let's, just, let's just be, not every man okay. out there is Good built point, to be Mikey. able to have, you know, women are more exposed to the ability to be able to date multiple people at once. You know, because they're women, they're approached more. Men don't really approach women as much. It's a known fact. Men have the fear of approaching. Reason why most men can't approach a woman is because he has fear of being shot down. So there are guys out there that'll be dating multiple women if they're waiting. You know, if they have something in the side, they don't mind waiting for this one future ninety-day prize, whatever. 
but it's it, it's very far often that a guy that guys have lots of side chicks. No, it takes a different type of person to do that. Like for 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 me wise, I'm not one of if I'm if I'm talking to a person and I feel that she she's she's a good person. I wanna I, I may want to see and explore this. I'm not gonna be messing around with anybody else. And the reason for that is because if you don't give your full attention to your potential thing that you want, you can't give her that hundred percent. So if a woman is somebody that I'm like, you know what, this person is somebody that I think I wanna I wanna pursue. I'm not going to be messing around just because I'm not getting any. Now, 90 days, that's kind of pushing it for me. But at the very same time, is if that is, okay, we'll see from there. But for the guys who say that they waited 90 days, and, and this is the problem because some, some guys will, will sit, that, you know, in the end, if you lost, if she didn't give it up and then she breaks it off with you or, or you, technically you don't even have a relationship, whatever. For the guy, that's, that's my problem with some men. They start whining and start calling women all these derogatory terms because all of a sudden she did not give it up no 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 it's not the, the in the end ask yourself a question what did you not do enough to be able to escalate the sexual tension what did you not do enough to be able to have her see you as a person that's the she wants to actually you know give it up that's the thing it's it is a you know in the end it's is a prize because it's a woman's determination if she wants to give it up to a man she has all the right for that and i respect that part now when it comes to somebody who i literally just want to hook up with <laughs> i will try to do it on the first night you know but what, what's really odd to me what, what makes me laugh a lot is like you know <laughs> what's odd just look at the the, the things that, they, that a lot of women say when they want to make a man wait they want to make a man wait three they want to make the, you know, it's all odd numbers, three, 90 days, 30 days, right? They all, they, it's all, it's all in threes, <laughs> you know, and then also a week, seven days. It's all in odds. It's never in even. It's, so it's, it's really odd for me to start thinking about that. But the thing though is in the end, some women also have this mentality of like, well, I'm going to make him wait three days. And if you actually can figure out what type of a personality she is, you can mess with that, that thing. So th that whole Steve Harvey thing. Women think that they found the book to mess with guys, but just like in the movies, the guys figured out that they had the book, so they used that against them. See, I, women don't understand that stuff. Like, women will start talking about, oh, yeah, I want a man who's the head of the house. And I heard this woman say once, but I'm the neck and I can make the head, I can make that head turn anytime I want to. Right? She's laughing about it. Then I look at the, the guy and he tells me, yeah, but I have the head has the brain and I can make her think that she's making my neck turn, my head turning wherever she wants to. You know, but if you if you really look at it, for the some of these women that tries to pretend I want I want to you know I want to hold my purity and, and wait three days, what you can do is take them on three dates because they want to wait three dates, right? So what you do is on your first date, you take them to a coffee shop, you take them them to a restaurant, and you take them to a club and go dancing. That's three dates. It actually messes with their minds as well. If you want to, this is this is if you really want to mess with somebody who you don't care about. You take them to three different spots. It's the same emotional thing that happens in their brain with the whole dopamine stuff that, oh, my God. And more than likely, you have a higher success rate to actually sleep with that person that very same night. Three dates in one day. If you want to play with a girl. But that's the thing is that you should not use tactics and tricks on women. It's just not right. Right? But it exists because the game has been skewered. And, you know, you guys talk about, you know, somebody made a comment earlier talking about, yeah, I'm willing to go Dutch. I get it. But if you just met this guy, your first date with them, and a guy tells you we're going Dutch, wouldn't most women look at that man with lesser value? How dare him? And imagine the stuff that she's going to get when she tells the girls that she went out, her friends, oh, he made me pay Dutch. You know what the girls are going to say? Oh, dump him. He's a cheap bastard. And then you're making the guy wait for 90 days. So are you telling me? These girls that want to pay Dutch are going to be willing to pay every single date halfsies. They want to go halfsies all the way. No, you're going to look at the man with lesser value. Like I respect women that does the alligator arms, you know? Oh, hold on. Let me go ahead and see if I can find my wallet to pay for it. No, at least do that. And I'm willing to pay for it. It doesn't matter. Oh, hold on. Oh, I can't, I can't reach the damn thing. Little Raptor, you know, those Raptor, you know, triceratop arms and stuff like that. Alligator I respect arm. those. Or alligator arms, yeah. 
But that's my problem. I think that <laughs> it just overdoes it. Like, respect the woman for it if she doesn't want to give it up. But at the very same time is the woman needs to understand that if the guy leaves, she has to respect the fact that she got left behind. But it depends on how they are mentally wise. A lot of guys can't handle all of a sudden being dumped after 30 days without getting the prize. But then there's also a lot of women that get mad when they get dumped as well after the man experiences it for the first time. How many women complain about that? You hear, oh, the moment I gave it up, he changed. It goes both ways. In the end, it's up to the individual person, how you are as a person. If, if I get dumped by a girl, I'm like, I'll be sad. I'll cry. I've done that so many times. But at the very same time, as I'll, I'll freaking put myself back up and say, all right, if, that's if I care about a person, right? But for a girl that will ghost me, whatever, I don't care. I'll find another one if I don't care about you. Man, so, man, Mike, you're spitting some fire there, man. I, I was going to say something, and then you, you went to another angle here. But before I come back to anything, I see Zoe just going back and forth here. Oh. <laughs> you, you, you like double dutch and waiting to get in right now. What, what you Do you have a rebuttal for Mike, or did you have an additional point on that? I mean, I feel uh, there's something on, uh, just a little unsettling about the idea of the whole point is to get to sex because I think that the whole point is actually to see if you want to be with the person um, and sex is a byproduct or just, you know, part of the journey to get there. And so I feel like, you know, the idea of, well, if she didn't give it up, then you feel like you got played um, or, you know, and as, as a woman, if I'm, if I'm seeing someone and, and I said, you know, I want to kind of wait and take things slow and I don't want to have sex. And that person is seeing other people. I can tell, you just don't get the same communication. You don't, you know, resources, right? We're, we're talking about resources. Time is one of our most precious resources. And so you can tell when somebody's with other people, right? And so in my mind, if that person is seeing other people, they're already showing me that they're not investing in me the way I need the investment. So then I'm, there's no problem. That's data. I feel like all of this is just data gathering. We're data mining. That's what dating is, gathering data. So if you feel like, you know, there's a person who you're like based on the physical and you want to have sex and that's the goal, you're not going to pay attention to the data you need to determine if this is your partner for life. And there are two ways to look at it. If you're trying to just get sex, you can put on the show and you can say the things, you can go on the dates, but you're doing it for the purpose of sex. But when people are looking for a life partner, somebody that they can, you know, collaborate with in that way and grow together they're going to be looking for the data that shows that this person is that person for them. And if that means that, you know, I might need to just control the physical tone it down a little bit, then we just got to do that. It's a gamble. All of this is all a gamble. We talked about it on, on the previous shows that it is truly a gamble. There are no guarantees, but sometimes when we focus so much on giving it up, getting it in and uh, you know, she's holding on to something so precious. I think that we commodify sex. So now women feel like they, have the power because they have the vagina and you know you 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 use it as punishment and you give it as a gift i really think we need to get away from that that's not something that i think we want to continue to embrace that's just my two cents true okay uh real fast here, i want to go to the chat future shock we're talking about this because dudes are getting finesse for the foodie dates and not getting no sex that, that this is actually real in 2021 here. And Mikey, you might can uh, correspond with these stats here that I'm going to throw out here. Um, do you know, do you guys know that men aged between 18 and 29 right now is having the least amount of sex in this current generation than ever before right now? Not my problem. I, yeah, it's not your problem, Mikey. I'm just saying, I know you probably heard, you're, you're, you know, you're in the medical field. I know you probably heard <laughs> these stats and everything. You know, that 18 and 29 ain't getting it in. And you know what's going on? The Why? Women, the women are finessing the dudes because they're too nice. All the things you said, like was always bringing out, like all these nice things JD was bringing out. I know I'm bringing one side to conversation. It might yeah, be I, for, for some reason, I don't agree with that. I think that, you know, I'm I think that's unfair. It's unfair for the women wise. I mean, I, I get where you're coming from. There's, there's some perspective. But mm -hmm. from my, my, my thing is that, you know, the thing though is most kids, though, if you really look at just people are not going out anymore. They're staying well, at I'm, home. I'm, I'm going to get to that, Mikey. You know, 
I'm going to get to that. Like you said, but people are not going out. And there's, there's a demographic that, of course, that doesn't make enough money. You know, men get to a certain I'm getting to get to a certain wage where that they start getting to their prime as far as financial earning. But so when a younger man getting to using this example here that, you know, may not have as much money and he's a nice guy and goes out in these dates and then he's trying to wait these 90 days and. Next, you know, bring the example of someone like Mike, for instance, high value earner who comes in, making a little bit more, more money and able to provide a little bit more as a woman. So I'm bringing the standpoint. You might have this one guy who's a nice guy who go on these foodie dates and he's putting on the 90 day road. Then you got the guy like Mike who comes in and he's going to smash in three dates. The, you know, per studies, they say that women will either will date equal or up. Men will date you know, down equal and down per studies, how it is. That's why if you look at the average, you know, um, marriage age wise, whatever, you know, women will typically marry or be with somebody at least a minimum about four, four years her senior. So the thing though, is when I think when, 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 if you guys remember when we were kids and stuff like that, we were trying to go after these girls, but they ended up with the seniors, you know, it, it happens all throughout life, how it is, but now it, because of just the whole, internet that's going on right now or, you know or web 2.0 whatever women want that value so now they're saying well who's the one that has more value they are going to try to go for a little bit of the slightly older people so i think a lot of guys are i'm not going to call them sips right and i think that that's completely wrong i just don't think that a lot of a lot of men just were not taught by their fathers or their big brothers how to be able to meet women and unfortunately, a lot of these guys are getting sucked into some of these communities when they still don't have any experience in life. You know, you have a bunch of young, young kids, you know, popping the red pill and you don't have experience with women yet. So you can't you, you can't you can't join the red pill community when you're still under 30, because my thing is, is that. You haven't experienced life. When's the last time have you actually approached a woman? When's actually the last time that, you know, you carried a conversation with people, but people are trying to find these communities. And a lot of guys, unfortunately, are going, I've seen young kids joining this whole MGTOW movement. And I respect MGTOW. I respect the red pill MGTOW movement, you know, men going their own way. I, I, I respect the whole S, you know, you know, you know, and all that stuff. But my thing is that, I don't know. It's just that these, these kids, <sighs> You know, they're, they're more stuck into relationships online. They're more stuck into wanting to have the next viral picture or viral video and not wanting to go out there and meet people. Like, meet people. Like, that's what we did back in the days. We went out and met people. They're not doing that anymore. Hey, and Mikey, sorry to cut you off here uh, in the chat here. Some people don't know about the red pill and everything. We can't describe that right now. There's there's a red pill and blue pill community, and there's also the purple pill when you mesh that. So we're going to have to get into it. We'll get into that. Sorry to cut you off there, Mike. Also, I just yeah. want to get to the chat here. Tito, what's going on, man? Uh, we see you trying to holler at Zoe. So, Zoe, you got a fan in the chat here. Tito, Tito is single, too. Yeah, Tito. <laughs> Tito Tito's going hard to paint. Shout out to Tito. He been with he been with the jump off for over ten years now. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's the yeah. true day one, so we got I got to send a shout out to Tito in there. Shout out to that David show. He's been heavy in the shout chat here, man. Comments. Your comments are real funny here. Future yeah, shock. Uh, I got to put this on the on the screen for future shock. Too. He's been going hard here. He says men will boom into women and they don't even like because they will starve for love. Actually, that's why the red pill community is growing so damaging. So, what man, is the red pill. I can I can give a fifth five minute breakdown if you want to. Uh, real fast, Mikey. Real fast. I want to go five right minutes. Oh, can I, you give like I, a not five minute? minute I, I want to go, 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 go to JD. Can you give yeah. two minutes? Red pill ma matrix. Red pill and the blue pill. Red blue pill. You stay in this matrix. Red pill. You're enlightened. Okay. Now you have the red pill movement start off by the pickup artist originally. How to be able to meet women. That's the first guys of the red pill. Now then you have the second generation with uh, Rolos Tomasi. You know, and so what end up happening is there's the creation of the <laughs> MGTOW or men going their own way, right? So first level mm -hmm. of MGTOW, men who just believe in long-term relationships but not marriage. Then second level of MGTOW, that's when people just believe that they only want to do short-term relationships. Then you have third level and fourth level, which is ghosting and which is your, um, your monk status, which they just said, forget women entirely. It's pretty much the opposite version of the feminist movement. Hmm. That's so you, 
It's so a lot you have going your own out there in them streets, man. It's a lot going oh, on. Okay, so, like, so you have you, <laughs> that's, that's so you, you're show. seeing it. So you have that, you know, uh, you know, stay. Uh, what's that? S Y L B M um, or S Y S B M. Stay your lane, you know, uh, black men. So that's another form that's in there as well in regards for oh. MGTOW movements. Oh my goodness! Uh, so <laughs> it's it's look it up. It's it, there's a lot of psychological stuff that's going on, but it is the response to how feminism mm-hmm. has taken over into our into our environment into um education has taken over in regards to um our culture and our music our movies our tv shows and all the networks wow okay yeah i didn't i didn't know the depth i didn't know the depth of it like that i I mean (laughs) i want to go to jd but i'm not sure if you know your uh if, if that kind of if this uh part of the conversation you know, throw you guys a little bit off here for a second here. Um, Don't go down the rabbit hole. Yeah, the rabbit <laughs> hole is deep. It's deep. Real quick, real quick. Hole. Did he answer your question, Doctor Zoe? Because I know you had that was your question. I was just, I just feel like when do people have time to be finding time for these forums and, uh, because, you know, what I mean, and because we're pandemic. men, because we're men, Zoe, and men have been because entertainment has taken over and it's all about for women information and not about men. Tell me a show that's about men in in the in the industry. That caters to men. Tell me a show. None. Long pause. None. Mm-hmm. Not a single one is meant for men out there. So where do the men go to be able to get their information? Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going on these forums. Interesting. On YouTube. No, it's, it's in YouTube. YouTube, the Red Pill community. Why do you think Kevin Samuels is 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 booming? Why do you think Fresh and Fit is booming? Why do you think Lapeef Network is booming? Why do you think all these men are now coming up about and talking? It's because women, a lot of men have not been given the full voice no more. But now that men are talking, women are now complaining. Hmm. Yeah. And now that the Jump Off Live is here, it's a network for men and women to come together. To <laughs> all of it. So you get everything to, right here, y'all. To bridge that, that gap. That's, that, obviously there's that, a division that's the there. dilemma that's going on. You, there's no show for men. Steve Harvey, simp pussy. Oops, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, my wow. I'm a pussy I'm cat, right? cat. Yeah. yeah. My bad. Yeah. Wow. Well. Red pill, blue pill. Okay, I learned something tonight. That's see, this is why it's important that we have these conversations because sometimes, and, you know, we you know, if you think about it, they're marketing to women because women spend more and all these things, and advertising drives television. But Mm -hmm. the good thing is during the pandemic, what we saw blow wide open is that people could get things on Instagram and Facebook Live. And so, you know, the information is out there. It's just how do we get information to the people? But also women want to know what men want and what they think. No, they Um, don't. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. No, they don't. No, they don't. They don't want to know what men want and what they think. Dr. Zoe, you you are one of the very few who I will say who's willing to want to know. But tell me anytime that a man starts talking about, you know, all this type of manpower and stuff like that, it's, it's women are going to be like, no, 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 no. But you, here's the thing. Here's a perfect example. You are willing to have a conversation. But when I say my statement, there's nobody in the bottom chat that asks, Michael, why do you think that way? They go straight to talking about what they feel. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. No one is wanting to talk. So it sounds very like you only. So it sounds like the one of the major issues that's going on out there is that people aren't willing to Converse. listen to folks who have a difference of opinion and try right. to they don't necessarily agree with them, but try to gain a better understanding as to their perspective and and where they're coming from. That's I do see that. I mean, that and that transcends just relationships. I see you know people pick sides politically. People pick sides religion wise, and they they again they put up these walls. But you do, I, I do agree that you do need to make a more concerted effort to listen to try to gain a better understanding as to where somebody is coming from in their perspective even if you don't agree with it because t- people do when they hear when they hear something they don't want to hear they shut it down immediately oh i, I can't mess with that right. you know so right and i want i wanted to comment too on um not to jump on user like that but we say that women don't want to hear what men have to say one of the things that we know is that i've i've had these uh difficult conversations where that I will say one thing and ask a question and then it's like blah 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 and i'll say well this is how, this is what i'm a man and this how but well this is what i feel and it's like f- feeling has nothing to do with it it's it's real before feels 
women put feels before reels. Anytime I've ever had a conversation about what men want, I've always had the rebuttal fighting me back on that. And I always had the, the dilemmas like, why are you fighting a man telling you what men want? Women has, has a conception to believe that they know what we want. And that's why we have these conversations now because the dating market right now, women don't know what we want. Whether if it's the young man who's trying to come up, whether it's a middle-aged dude, whether it's an older man, whether he's single, whether he's divorced, whether he has kids, whatever the case may be, women do not know what men want here. And so that's why we're seeing all these difficult problems, you know? And so that's why we got to come about here and say, we'll come together, but it's all about listening. It's all about communication. So during the pandemic, what was weird is I started doing virtual visits, which meant that people were answering the phone at home. And a lot of women were talking to me about, because now they're stuck in the house with the man that they were married to or with. And what's interesting is when they were stuck in the house, it made a lot more relationship problems <laughs> arise because the, the, the bars closed, the movie theaters closed, the liquor store stayed open in North Carolina. But when people were stuck in the house, they started to realize that they couldn't communicate. And some of the reason they couldn't communicate is that women want to start, we lead with emotions. That's true. I, wanna, I will do something depending on how I feel about it. And men tend to be more data driven. Well, why should I go? Who's going to be there? What time does it start? Women are like, I think it'll be fun. I think we'd like it. It'll be romantic. So it's, it's just how we speak and how we interpret things. But then I started to read about it. And the reason why I think, you know, there's science behind why women and men think differently. They do functional MRIs where they scan your brain. And while you're doing things, it shows where what parts of the brain light up. And women process things different than men. But the main thing, too, is that not, not only do we process things different than men, we pay attention to a lot of nuances. So you could say something to your, to your significant other and she will look at how you said it and she'll think about you didn't say it like that last time, you know, and, and make all these inferences because women also take the context. So I always say that some of the times for women, especially if you're interested in knowing and learning more about men, it's okay to say, let me make sure I'm understanding you right and rephrase. It's nothing wrong with saying that because half the time we get it wrong. We get it wrong because we're listening with emotions, but most of the time it's just not cool to, um, to, to blanket statement. And it's okay to teach a woman too. You can teach her by giving her feedback in a calm way to say, hey, you know, I asked you to do this. You didn't do it. You know, you're always on the Instagram when we're trying can to have quality I, time. I, can I push back on it? You said a calm way. Yeah. I, I know that me and Mikey are the ones that have a different opinion on this. I've done mm -hmm. the calm way so many times, right? It works in, in my situation a lot of time. But majority of the time, the calm way does not work. And every time we have to change our tone to be direct, it's like, why are you talking that way? I don't like your tone. But is the information, is the message correct? See, sometimes the, we use the tone and we can't use the same tone 24 seven. When we talk, when I talk to my daughter, you know, she may be four and she'd be ripping and running. When, when the bass kicks in, she gets in line. We have to use tone. We cannot always talk in monotone and use the same tone all the time, Zoe. You got, you, no, you, but I'm, when I say calm, I may be because, you know, you know, I'm Jamaican, so we get loud and we get fast. And I said, I've been in your house too, so I'm like, why are you clapping right now? <laughs> so I think maybe the calm is because, I, you know, I, I, I have a duality of languages and one of them get turned up really quick. But, you know, for me, I think it's a, a matter of, Making sure that when you are, because I think people match energies in a lot of ways. So let's say that you are trying to spend quality time and your woman's on the phone with her girlfriend and listen to her and her man problems. And you're like, well, what about our good relationship? Now you're messing it up. Sometimes it takes a moment of just, all right, let's, it doesn't mean you're not, you're not firm. It doesn't mean you're not, you drop the base. Nobody <laughs> is saying change how you speak. It's what you're bringing in. So I think that's important. What am I bringing in here? I'm bringing in, I want to spend time with you, something you asked for. Before we go to somewhere else, there, uh, another question here. We have a special guest here for the show here. We have Ken Davis on the show here. Just add on to the live stream. Everybody, welcome Ken to the show. Hey, what's going Hi. on, everybody? Hello. Peace, brother. Well, <laughs> an interesting piece. Interesting conversations. Um, Wow. I know. <laughs> I know we have you on for anything but, but we want to also include you on this dating discussion here because it's rough out here in these streets, Ken. You know, men and is women. It? 
Man, men and women, it's hard. Men and women are having it hard. I mean, I don't know if you're in a successful, you know, a marriage or a, a yeah, I'm, 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 right yeah, now. I'm not in the streets right now. I'm not, not in the streets. The streets. <laughs> Congratulations. No, it's not hot boy summer for Ken. Uh, yeah, it's not hot boy summer for me. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, I don't know. Listen, I think, and it's funny, uh, just taking it in from all of y'all, one thing that Zoe said is the fact, first of all, this shouldn't be this transactional. Now, me saying that, is living in the cloud, but it's just how it should be. You know what I'm saying? It, it really shouldn't be where it's just like this for that. But the world we live in kind of, and it, unfortunately, really, the reality of if you look at everything in this world kind of makes it this for that. And we you shouldn't, and particularly women since they have the power, commodify sex. But, like, I just don't understand these dudes. Now, I, I got to go with Mike, all right? Uh, Pastor Mike over there. All right, <laughs> from uh, uh, because like he said about options, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of dudes don't have options, and then when you look at the the MGTOW stuff, I mean, listen, that sounds like a lot of cats playing a lot of video games and not getting in these streets. Now, my dad, my dad, it was a lot of years. It was a, it was a, a real big separation between the age of me and my father, and he really didn't tell me like this is how you talk to women and this is how you really get down. And my older brother. It, yeah, whatever. So I kind of had to learn a lot of that myself, but we learned it. You know what I'm saying? And you, you got your heart broke. And probably getting your heart broke is what turns you into being a, a a guy that was out there for a second or whatever because savage. you was struck. You was a savage. You was a savage, Johnny. You was a savage. All right, you know. But still, I look at it like this: majority of the time that I've been in successful relationships, we kind of fell into that relationship where we were dating. And then we kind of isolated each other from everybody else naturally. You know, but I have, thank you, organically. I have had women tell me, yeah, 90 days. And it's that's cool. But what Zoe said, um, you're going to know because I'm not paying that much attention to you. And if I'm still, if we're still connected when the 90 days rolls around, or I had a good month that last month where you felt the attention was what you needed, then we connected. You know what I'm saying? And if we didn't, we did it. And I've had women that I, I, don't, I can't speak for them, but I would say that they regret that initially we didn't com we didn't connect because later on when it was kind of like, yeah, we was together. And I was like, no, we was not. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> nothing. No. And in my book, Shorty, it was not going down like that. But, <laughs> in, but it, I mean, in, in general, um, I don't I mean, in, in general, it's kind of sad when you really think about it. You know, not that someone will say that it takes 90 days to get to know you. That's by no means is what I'm saying is sad. It's that it's it's so complex, this dance. You know what I'm saying? And then the, the, to add to the complexity, what Mike brought up as far as the amount of these young men who aren't having sex. And I'm, it's not even bad that you're not having sex, all right, to a degree. But that was like my golden age, that, that, age, that era right there. Like that's where when you said that the red pill, you have to be 30. Those are the experiences that you get to where you kind of know who you are when you're entering your 30s instead of kind of still knowing who you are, what you like, what you put up with, um, what you what what you feel is really healthy for you. Because a lot of times we're around people that we don't know that aren't healthy for us, but we we, we, we want them. So we, we put up with it. Um, but again, I don't know, because I mean, uh, Mike, I had options. Is that can I can I say that on here back in, in my day? I. I had options, uh, not to you know brag on myself, but you know it it was fun being a young man when I was growing up, to say the least. I mean, I I I won't say I miss it, but those were the days. Uh, I just want to add, Ken, that it is sad, but in Mikey, you can probably compound this. It is very transactional these days, you know, not all the way through, but the way uh, women and men looking at dating and like say about the red pill and blue pill community and things of that nature. There are there is a large standpoint of women who are looking for security and it becomes transactional. Not all women are like this. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that the new day and age, we're in a different age bracket. We're probably not exposed to what younger people are, are seeing nowadays. Mike, maybe you can expound us a little bit more before we close out here. But it is a little bit more transactional in a lot of these things, especially in the high populated cities. Yeah, I mean, it is transactional now, but it shouldn't be. It's like it, it. It's just like like you know like like Ken was saying it was different when we were younger, but now it has turned into this transactional thing. You have to have a certain thing. It became 
you know, it's it wasn't like what's your worth as a person, but what's your worth in the dollar signs? What can you provide me? Can you can you do you have the car that you want? Like, you know, try taking a girl out in high school now and tell her you're gonna take her out in a bus pass. It, it, it's just it's just not gonna happen. But back in the days it did work for us, you know. But we all know that once a woman you know, rides in a car with a date, she's going to date a guy with a car from now on because when she experiences that, not to say that not all of them will, won't downsell, but the thing, won't downsell themselves, but the thing though is, it's it's unfortunate how it is. Now, it shouldn't be that way, you know, and, and talking about like what Kenneth says, 90 days, but that doesn't mean it's going to last 90 days. If, if I hear a girl tell me that it's going to take 90 days for her to, you know, for that to happen, I'll respect it, but that's just an objection. That's just me as a person that I have not shown enough value for this person to want to actually have that experience with me. But it shouldn't be just that way because if, a, if you know, because it goes the same thing. If a girl gives it up too fast, then you start wondering how is she really. But just going in regards for you know what you say, I mean, is it transactional now? It is. It's unfortunate because that's where it is. That's where we put ourselves at this moment. Women now know how much you make depending on what job you have that's why they, they'll ask how much where, where do you work what do you do they already know what that worth is but the problem is if you see so many different things most women don't know how much you paid for dinner most women don't know you know they don't know what the average man's salary is and that's i think a big problem is that women are not educated about those situations but then we take it to the other side where a lot of men have lost accountability for themselves. And it's just sucks that how do we educate young men to be better men? You know, and that's the hard part. There's 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 no structure in place for that. You know, it, it's just not I I did not grow up with a brother. I never had that. And so I didn't know how to learn, but my father gave me some basic education of how it is to deal with women, but I had to learn it myself. And, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, I, I feel bad for the younger guys. That's, that's just my thing. It's just that they, there's no accountability anymore on both sides. You know, both sides are to blame. But the thing though is the moment something bad happens, you blame the other person rather than look at yourself and saying, what did I do wrong? You know, for the guy goes, the guy that expects women to just fall in his lap, who are you? I mean, do you have a good job? Did you put yourself to something? And a lot of guys don't have that. You know, I don't know. It, it, it's a complicated thing. I mean, and it's it, it sucks for people, but people don't want to learn new things, you know? And speaking on that complicated note, we have to let one person drop off. Dr. Zoe has another pressing matter. You know, she got doctors with limbs falling off. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thank you so much. Great show tonight. And we'll check out on the next on the next show here. Take care, Dr. Zoe. Okay. Yes, yeah, salute. <clears throat> We're down one member. With now, now there's six. <laughs> real, real, real quick though, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say the the women that have tried the ninety day with me, um, it wasn't a knock. Like I, I one thing to kind of for also wait, what's this James Perigo cat? I mentioned earlier talking about who are these foodie uh, cats, and he said, if I don't know I'm probably one of them, I was not one of those dudes. If I was it's, tricking, it's, it's, I knew I was tricking. It's a real thing. Like I, I, we, no, no, I, I believe I know, I know yeah. suckers out here. I know suckers out here. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Women have you say, you're self-aware. <laughs> no, no, I've, I've tri no, I've tricked yeah. money. No, no, I would be, I would be a lie to say that I haven't been a sucker. Like I will not sit here and lie. It's a grow. You go through your growing phases in, in, in this world Guilty. out here. Yeah, so I'll be it'll be a lie, but the, really, like, dude, I, I if I'm tricking off, I know I'm tricking off. I'm not just whatever, but I, I'll say this it's not totally a knock for a woman to want to say wait 90 days. Uh, a lot of times, and I, I, I know what Johnny was saying, or uh, as far as, and I think you too, uh, Dave, as far as wait, you you just gave it up to, to Bouchon and he he knew you <laughs> from last night. You know what I'm saying? And now I got to wait. Sister but she knew, Bou Sister she knew Bouchon was, she, she was trash, though. An hour but you an know hour. what? And I got to pay the higher tax because but, she made a bad decision. But no, no. See, that's not totally the reason why. Well, no, I'm not mad at her, though. He said, I don't yeah. want to think that, oh, you got no. You made that decision. That's no, your consequence. Now, I, the consequence no, no. is, I'm going to go over here. Okay. Listen, that was this is what I'm saying. You. This is what I'm saying. It's not always 
that it's because Bouchon hit. They know the Bouchon's hit, y'all. So you got to understand, Bouchon's hit. He's probably like 6'3", you know what I'm saying, slim. You, the Bouchon's, they get it in, <laughs> all right? But I'm just trying to say that Man, she sees she sees something in you. A lot of times, not all the time, I'm just saying in my personal own experience, <clears throat> the woman sees something in you that she's trying, she thinks this is going to help build a relationship. Now, with me, it was like really like, nah, and, but it ended up happening because when I came back around, we ended up linking up and then, you know, the relationship blossomed. But it's not always that they're putting the 30, the, the, the 90 days on you because of what happened in past relationships. They're putting the 90 days on you because they think there's some value to you and they don't want to mess it up by just jumping into it. Like they had not just the, like they have in the past, but they're really trying to make you think this is quality. Perhaps if you view women that have sex early as being uh, promiscuous, they don't want you to have that type of uh, inclination about them. So that's also part of the, the reason why some women hold off of some men, in my opinion, in, in my life. That is so true. One thing I want to say this last thing here is that reason why, one of the reasons why I brought this up to this point too is that we're not mad at the women for putting those boundaries. Women should have boundaries. They should know what they want in their life. That is that is not what we want to discuss here. Everybody should have men should have boundaries for what they want as well. That's the communication aspect. But the, another issue is that if you put that 90 day rule and I say I'm not waiting for it, then the reaction that comes with that, how come you can't wait for me? I am not like you. You should you, you should got to respect the boundaries of the man who was adding that as well. So mm. you, just you, you won. You, you made mistakes in your past. You let Boom Sean get it. You let, you know, Tyrone get it. You let, you, you let Miguel, get, you let Miguel get down and dirty. But you know what, though? You know what happens with Dave? You're going to make Dave wait? Okay, then. <laughs> no, no. You, you, Dave can get down in day 91, but just know there's Michelle, there's Lisa, and then there's, you know, whoever who is not putting that tax on me. So there's consequences. But don't get mad at me for it, though. You do you, you do me, and then we get together 91. That's what works. Not everybody has that same scenario. I'm just saying that that's an aspect that people don't talk about when we say no, and then the woman gets mad, and then how we look like the bad guy. I, I just don't know if you're not exclusive, and this has been in, in my, life, my, my relationships. If you're not exclusive, right, I'm not really asking you what you're doing when you're not with me, to be honest with you. You know I want to have sex. I've made it plain and clear. You've told me that you, you think you want to wait. If I'm still interested enough that we still are cordial and we talk, cool but my business really should be my business and your business should really be your business so even if during that 90 day period if i'm dating like I, i've had women like yeah they kind of know but they also kind of know like they may kind of be like what you what you've been doing this is like i've been out i've been outside i've been in the streets but i mean and i'm not going to go in depth into what i've been doing because it's none of your business you you haven't earned the right to a certain degree for me to really tell you and that, that's not to say that i won't be honest and say it but like, I don't get why you would be in someone's business. Like, I I, I know I, I've tried my best not to be in folks' business. And I, I appreciate what folks are in my business. If we haven't made, come upon some agreement, then really what's going on in my life and what's going on in your life when it comes to other people really isn't anything for me to find out until we, me and you are talking about being serious about something. Man, you hit that right in the head, Ken. We should have had you on for the beginning of the conversation. <laughs> here. We would have enjoyed you on here. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna shut down this little date and talk here. For, you know we, what we're doing is having this relationship series right now. So you're more willing to come back and check us on future chats here, Ken, as we get into the next part of our show. Reason why you had it on here. Uh, I just want to thank Dr. Zo for uh, talking with our relationship uh, advice here, things of that nature. John, JD, and Jeff, as well as Mike. You know, for Mike's Filipino journey. You know, he's been off the last few weeks here. Unofficial, official jump off member here. Anybody else want to add anything before we transition to our Anything But series here? Yeah, man, I, I got a solution to all of this. I'm listening to everybody's comments. I'm reading the comments and everything. A lot of great insight. I got a solution. Man, we can wait the 90 days, right? Jump Off Live is going to create an app, right, <laughs> for people dating. The 90-day app. Women will wait the 90 days. But what happens in between those 90 days uh, if things don't work out, if you're not vibing anymore, of course, when a man goes on to the next one, he got to start that 90 days over. That's no more. So what we'll do on this app, okay, the days will count up. And everybody that's involved with the app, women, you can see a man's days on how long he's been waiting. So if it doesn't work out in that situation, that woman will have to sign off on an electronic voucher 
to the next woman <laughs> that this man gets with, and that that number will still count towards that woman. So that woman, <laughs> so that is. So if you wait forty days, then that's that added to the next one. So you only waiting twenty. Yeah. <laughs> 20 days and that woman has to agree she'll see okay he's at 40 days you know what okay I'm, I'm, doing 20. I'm just saying y'all wilding y'all wilding out you wilding out you wilding that, out way, right there. that way you're not wasting out. your time and it's time spent you can use that voucher towards the next one <laughs> like james said booty your 90 me. days are your 90 days it's not necessarily, you know what i'm saying you doing that you you that was, those are your 90 days and hey, you divvy them up as you please. Does that go <laughs> under assurance, JD? It could. <laughs> you have a plan on that. It's 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 a separate it's a separate section on the on the app. You know, it's oh, on your on your ninety. That's what we can call it or something like yeah. that. It's like a spe- <laughs> going to a specialty clinic, right? Yeah, an extra forty dollar <laughs> Damn. Oh my goodness, man, man, man. It can't be this hard out here, man. It cannot be this hard out here in these streets, it's, man. Apparently, it is. I, like I said, I'm I, just. I, <laughs> so I am. I wanted to do these shows because it is really the, this hard in the streets. The days when really women, out. women are having sex, like when I. Okay, again, I'm not in these streets, but women seem more promiscuous and open now than when I was a teenager. Fact. All right. So if this you tell a dude, I'm being honest. If I was a teenager right now. <laughs> I think I think it's good for the guys who are above 35 years of age who actually created wealth, who created their, you know, their status, who actually has a good job, a career, who can carry themselves. I think it's just a bad stuff for about the young guys who don't yeah. debt because the older guys are going for the young girls, the younger girls, you know. You you will try to, you know, if you're a single guy above 35, you're not going to typically go for somebody within your age. You're going to try to go a little bit younger, 30, maybe a little bit like that. So that's where that's just where it is. So I feel bad for like those younger guys. And I'm, you know, we talked about like MGTOW and stuff like that, but there's a whole other issue that comes up. You know, there's there's what they call incel now, if you guys don't even know what that is. No, no, please inform me. Yeah, I heard oh, of that. That's, yeah, so that's, that's hard. It, incel yeah. is involuntary celibates. So you have these virgin kids who says that they're growing up not getting any. And I'm not I'm not joking around. These guys are the Taliban of the red pill community. Look it up. <laughs> man, there's so many new gangs and cliques out there, man. This, this one dude just got arrested three days ago. Three, this kid got arrested three days ago because he was he was he was actually um going to uh Columbus University and he was about to shoot up the the um the dormitories of, of some of those um not fraternities, but sororities. Sororities. He just got arrested three days ago. There's that dude that these guys are. This is the thing. You hold sex from guys, they're gonna go crazy. Whoa, no. whoa, no. we can't blame women because they. Not, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not sex bl- with some I, of these I'm weirdos. Not, I'm not blaming women. I'm saying <laughs> yeah, like, guys. Because that's where we man. stepping over the yeah. line. Like y'all got yeah. to have sex with these weirdos. No, no, no. But <laughs> these I'm weirdos got to figure another guys. way to get some. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's they got dogs nowadays. They got these guys who don't figure out how to how to meet women. I mean, there's that one dude that shot up like six people in California. That dude looked like a supermodel. Oh, Lord. But he was part of the <laughs> incel community. You have these crazy little virgin dudes that blames women, <laughs> right? And that's why they're called incels. Damn. Involuntary celibates. Mm. Look it up. Then you have your volcels, your voluntary celibates. Oh, my goodness, man. Hey, I'm and from an era. I'm from an era where what statue you playing? You know that, that's, that's, totally why, that's, why, that's why. That's why. I tell Dave, don't, don't go into the rabbit hole. You, you, you ask somebody what well, set they claim nowadays, man. I'm like, what are you saying? Look, look, man, I'm what do you do that at? You, people are like, gonna go home and research. I'm like, what the hell's in cell? Oh snap! What's this? Hey, I ain't know, trying I, to go and buy inside I, anybody's cell. That's all I know. <laughs> hey, hey guys, and to Ken, to Mikey's point, like, why is all happening? Only ten to twenty percent of the men in this country are having sex. What? That's I guess sweet. we I guess we all good though, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the man. Listen, <laughs> that's the, that's the no, man. No, no. Listen, no, hey, ten to twenty <laughs> because what Mikey is saying here, the men that are thirty to thirty five. <laughs> no, they can't, they can't uh, be right. 
here's the thing. The men that are 30 and 35 and up are the ones having all the sex because women are going for older men, men who are high value options. So <laughs> it's a crazy no world though. Right, let, let women have no question. problem sharing. And like I said, the men from 18 to 29, the incels are not having sex, the voluntary ones. So you literally have a small part of population having sex with all the women right but now. Wait, wait, wait. If, let's just say hypothetically, right? Uh -huh. That And this would be way outside of my age range. Let's just say I uh, went after a 19 year old woman, right? And all it being a grown ass man, I would expect for her to still have sex with a young man. She with, don't want him. Listen, I'm, I'm, he, he's young. Look, you, do you know that the capacity that his lungs can pump out air and the, the actions that he should be able to do? to the shop. But his, you better, but you his pay. wallet, but his wallet is dry as hell. Uh, listen, I, I, that's the point. I, I, I get that. And the I'm transactional taking, point that we brought up earlier. Yeah, I get. I'm taking her to the. This is just how I, how I, I thought how things yeah. moved out here. When I see like these Instagram models, and we know they have a benefactor on these yachts, I still think that they're still having some uh, yeah. intimacy with people around their age, just because like it's that still is, is, is uh, eye candy as far as you know. What I'm saying like, oh. Look at look at money bag yo. I'll use him for an example. You know what I'm saying? He, my my benefactor, he's not all tatted up and he doesn't drink lean. I like this, but you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm just saying, like, I would still yeah. think that she's doing both. Listen, get you somebody that can do both. That's the problem with these young guys. Get you, <laughs> get you a young lady that can do both. She has a her benefactor, but she also looks at listen. I'm telling it's these dudes and talking. Women, there's a net listen, not all of them. There's a natural something in women that always want to help. All right. Mm -hmm. There is. I'm telling you that. And a shout out. And just for me personally, I'm, I'm big on the sisters. Shout out to the sisters. There's something mm -hmm. natural. Not to say there's not something that they just about them. There's naturally something that want to help. And if you, it's the personality revealing your person, it's dog, it's still ways to get you some out here. Y'all, you kids oh, have just been too I can't get some. Yeah, it's just when it's you're the young, isolation. It's just saying that when you're young, the odds are lower than when we were younger. Even at seven, so let me say, so like at 16, 17, it's 16 and 17, all right? I'm and I have to say, there's, there's not some pedophiles out here, right? But usually, you would think that those high school girls, and I know some of them, and when I was even in high school, were, were, were dating guys that were in their early 20s or whatever. But yeah. still, they were getting in with high school dudes. You telling me they not getting it in right now? And all the freakiness that it seems like these kids are doing when I watch it's, these it, videos. It's per studies now. The studies yeah. now show it's because a lot of men feel that they're inadequate to be able to uh, attain these type of women. They, they, the, the women in their group. They just feel that because of this whole Instagram thing, guys are like, crap, I need, I need a Bugatti. I need a Lamborghini. I need this. And so some guys even just have that, you know, that mentality like, I can't even approach a woman right now. Let me so, ask you, women. Let me let women me ask, come to you though. The women, the women will come. Like again, hey, Ken, 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 I'm me, sorry. Me, I'll be quiet. It's all let me, let me let, let, no, no. I, I want to give <laughs> you this here. I want to give you this, and I want to hear your honest feedback on this one here. Think about how Instagram has changed the game. Think about this girl in Idaho. She may be the baddest girl in Idaho in her small little town of 300. And you know, the couple of guys that she may get <laughs> high school, you know, football player like that, the college dude in that area, right? But with Instagram now, she creates a profile. Now that girl in Idaho is not getting hit up by guys in Idaho. She's getting hit up by guys from L.A. She's getting hit by guys from Florida, New York, all over the place. And these dudes are able to fly her out now. So the dude who had a chance with that girl when you were getting it in, mm -hmm. now that, that dude in L.A. who making 300 k and he's six foot two and he's like, mm -hmm. hey, what's up? She ain't mm -hmm. hitting that dude. Know why? Because that dude's friend zone now because that because now she has more options than ever before. Thanks to Instagram and social media. That's, 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 that's just one example. Wait. But it, and that's macro. But I'm giving that as a high example. Listen, listen, the Drake said this in a line. She at home now. She at home now. She's at home now. You should be able <laughs> to pull. I mean, again, it's. The, it, it, I'm not, listen, Mike. I wasn't the dude. Let me. So let me be full, full on. I wasn't Mister. Like there have been times where I was Mister. Come Mac you down. I wasn't super Mister. Mac you down guy. And I and, and and I've been rejected and I haven't been rejected. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, I guess I was fortunate. You know, I was blessed in life because the whip, like, dog, put yourself in the game. That's the, the real problem. Now, again, if you've yes. ever been away to college, all right, I would say this. If your girl was, we, if we was doing a road trip and your girl's in the backseat with me, and I said something happened, but I had that amount of time to talk to her, 
we was gonna date. Now, not to say I was gonna take her from you, but me and her was gonna have <laughs> we was gonna have some type of interaction. If I had that much time with your, if I got three hours to sit and chat it up with your lady, all right, and give the best impersonation, I mean, impression of me, it's, it's I'm coming, right? Like, and it's just you have to put yourself in the game, and also, and I think we've all, but not to say all of it. I know that time, I, I remember, I remember a young lady. Um, where she was like one of the, the baddest chicks on the yard, right? And I remember the first time that I got to spend some time with her, um, and I actually had like an ex-girlfriend over my crib at the time, and I left, and I, I just didn't nail it down, and I, I was around this girl a year later, and man, I came at this a whole, because one, I had a, I had a, look, I had the game, you got to go back into the, to the shop, check the game plan out, what, what did I do wrong? <laughs> All right, listen, I got to come at this like this. The next time I saw her, she was all on me and from just how I was acting in that situation. And growth is, is growing as a young man at that time because that, that just a leap in like a year, year and a half, there was a lot of growth in my confidence and being in this situation again and knowing like, dude, come on, this is not that serious. You know, I think that is a lot of, I think it's the isolation from, social media from the fact that you don't have to go outside if you don't want to go outside you don't have to interact if you don't need to interact I, it, it it creates issues when it comes to organic interactions with people that everyone really needs especially when you're awkward because there's aspects of me that are awkward you know what i'm saying and i had to know that to overcome that there's a lack of opportunity to to to, to work on that that awkwardness that's yeah. that's the issue people yeah. are so attached to phones and everything else that, you know, I can I can mac down whoever I want if I got 15 minutes to decide what I'm going to say in this next text. But when you are there face to face with that person, yeah, of course, you're going to of course, you're going to be an incel at that point. What's that you claim? What's that you claim? Don't forget also like 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 the whole. I hate to use the word, but the Me Too movement of like just not the just original feels. Me Too. I'm talking about the the the. I hate to use this, but when the white girls took over with Me Too, you know, when they just straight up like those home feminist lady took over, it just turned into a whole thing. Just look at NBC. NBC's having this new thing set up with them because we all hooked up with people at work before. Well. Guys that are married don't admit it, right? I'm, I'm just saying is that <laughs> <laughs> we've all hooked up with people back in the days when we were at work. NBC is putting the new thing now that you can you can rat on someone if you know a relationship happening within the workspace. Hmm. Damn. Hmm. Yeah, so man. now they're preventing people hooking up at the workspace when most people met their significant other. Or a person that they end up with a good in a in a long term relationship at work. Oh, this, now this you have Matt. now you have this thing. NBC. Who's next? AB. You know. It, you know who's next. Everyone's gonna eventually jump into this whole thing, and that's the problem. So henceforth, a lot of guys definitely are not gonna be getting any. No, I I, I have to agree that not be knowing how to how to approach a woman due to perhaps if she thinks that you're being insensitive or being crude can factor in. But I'll yeah. say this too. I think sometimes I, I was picking up my daughter today and I was standing in line and um, this it was two, two, two women talking and you could tell the, the lady in front of her was just had she had diarrhea of the mouth. She kept talking. She kept talking. She had turned around away from the lady. She still was talking and talking and talking. And, you know, how some people one when they feel nervous, they have to just keep rap, talking, 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 talking. Yeah. I feel like sometimes with dudes, they don't know that once you have kind of engage this woman enough to where she has some type of interest shut your ass up and leave her alone until y'all go out again you you meet her you engage her you see if you guys are going to sit there and talk again later then you leave her be do sit there and still want to be up under and you end up saying something all right revealing something over talking doing too much where no 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 Get the next, get the next move in, then dip and let her do at this function whatever she's gonna do, and you do what you're gonna do. But people have this issue with disengaging after they've engaged and someone has already made a commitment to go further, even if it's just a date or anything else. That is such a good that point. right there is a, so true. Mm. And like you said about communication and engagement, the guys, like I said, the incels are not getting in, they're scared to talk to women. Just go ahead and say hi. Even if you're not gonna get the number, just start a conversation in the coffee shop. 
in the, where you waiting for your food. That's the way to break the ice and start getting those reps in. I don't, I'm not even looking for it. I could be in, in, in line and say, hey, how you doing? Just talk and make conversation because I'm bored. I want to be on my phone. If every man did that, you talk to 100 women, You the numbers show that you're going to get 10 numbers probably if you're on your game. Now, women say, that's all? Out of those 10 numbers, you might sleep with one. So the point is, just talk to everybody. The numbers show that you don't, you, you know, you, you're going to miss every shot you don't take. And the problem is, though, is that men are not taking that shot. They're not approaching it. Like I said, they're just sitting back on the phone. They know how to send a few text messages, JD, like you said. And then once they say, hey, what do you do? I like basketball. Hey, girl, don't check out no basketball, man. <laughs> like basketball. On, you know? This is being real. You got games on your phone? Yeah, you got games on your phone. What's I'll, your I'll level on Candy Crush? You know? my, my, my last part, I'll say this, too. You also got to find some new pawns. Um, like, I know that, for instance, working downtown, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a decent-sized black male, and sometimes, physically, I can't code switch. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. So some people are so somewhat afraid of me because, physically, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. There are things, I'm not trying to do it, but there, there's the stuff that I give off where you know I'm not a token brother. And I'm not dissing token brothers. I'm just saying that I can't fit into that role as easily as some of people can. Uh, that I feel like there's a slight threat level when it has come to me. But on the south side, you know, I notice I get more play. Or this past weekend, and again, I'm not, I wasn't, I'm not doing anything, but you know, eyes paying attention. I was in Milwaukee this past weekend. Man, if I if I lived in Milwaukee, I would really be getting there right now. They they love a brother in Milwaukee. All right, you gotta move around and see necessarily where your vibes fit. You know what I'm saying? Because if you if you're if you're fishing in the same place and no one's biting your bait, you gotta switch up the bait mm -hmm. and or the pond that you're fishing in. <laughs> that is such a good point. Cam. Damn, you <laughs> love, you love brothers out there because brothers. A Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hey, th this is what I don't understand. Like, well, uh, okay, <clears throat> I'm, I'm I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the whole ten to twenty percent of, of 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 men are not having sex. Um, I understand, you know, not everybody is as smooth as Billy D. Williams and all of that. But think about like 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 Ken was talking about, you know, from how it was back then to now. Back then, you know, uh. It, 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 it was looked down upon for women to be very promiscuous. And this we're not talking that long ago. But now they glorified thoughtism. Look at all these music videos. You know what I'm saying? How many thought songs are on the top 20 right now? John, hold that thought. We got a little. Mikey's got to go. Hold that go, thought. Guys. Well, Mike. Yeah, I got to go, guys. I got to go. Oh, but man, appreciate it. Now, brother. Kind of love, pleasure Mike. to meet you, sir. Have a good nice, one. Guys. Nice to meet you, guys. Mike, man. Have a good one. Have a good, Have a good one. one. Mike's Filipino. Okay, Mike, Journey. Thank you, Check him out on YouTube. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And whenever he does his premieres as well, Mike's Filipino Journey. Let's check you out later, Mike. Later, man. Now, John, the thought that you're talking about, go ahead and continue. Your yeah, man. I think on a previous episode of, of The Jump Off, we even had uh, one young lady who did her little poem, Thoughts of a Thought. You know what I'm saying? It's like thoughtism right now is what's, what's popping. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> You can be nerdy, you can be smooth, you can be whatever. Man, these women, these girls, whatever you want to call them, they're going these days. They're going. When we're talking about sex, period. I'm not talking about value, I'm not talking about uh, uh, somebody that, that that that's worth it, waiting on them. I'm talking about purely sex. Thoughtism is glorified. And we all know that media has a big influence, especially on the younger population, but adults too. People particularly women, they see these, these thoughts out here, glorifying it, uh, talking about it, being it, showing what they got from being a thought. And out here in the streets, they duplicating that same thing, trying to duplicate those same results. So anybody should be able to get some. You shouldn't be an incel. You should be trying to Share your sales. You know, Excel. You <laughs> right. you hey, you shouldn't be, but that's the that's the situation now. Like I said, Instagram, <laughs> social media has killed the dating game because women now can have as many options as they want. They that, can. That men can too. Yeah, they can. But the problem though is that for men, our our level where women are actually looking at us now, not us in this room here, but the, the new age dating game, it's about financial. It's about security. It's about securing 
what is next for him. And of course, for men, what we're talking about here, nine day rules about sex. This conversation about men is about us getting sex and women want that security, you know? But what happens then when you have social media where that, that security is right here and this click here and that conversation and that conversation and that conversation because you're leveling up, you're leveling up to setting yourself up basically. If this guy ain't gonna get it, then this guy don't do it. The problem though, like we said here, if you're 18 to 29, you're not established, you're not in your career, you really don't have as much to offer. You don't have as much experience. And let's just keep it 100 in the sexing game right now. If you ain't having sex, you ain't experienced, so you ain't laying it down. So the, the the younger market is losing right now, and it's sad. Man, it's rough. I'm gonna just shut my. I'm mouth just gonna pray for them. No, Ken, don't shut your mouth. I, we want to hear you, brothers. You Jay, make it seem Jay, like you Jay. make it seem like we should all be in the streets right now. If you're telling me, I can't <laughs> I believe. I didn't say I that. cannot believe that young twenty year old girls. All right, I'm just saying this is just from my belief mm -hmm. that young men are, are like I don't care. No, I can't say that because I mean, I, I I'm lying when I say I was going to say I don't care if you 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 don't have money, money, money that you can't get any. But I can say this. So, for instance, when I was um, high school, college age, I was a young male that looked and seemed from the fact that I was a college student that I was upwardly mobile. So you know that got you in the door everywhere you know what i'm saying basically compared to what's going on here like you know chicago's been messed up since the 60s you know people think that this crime wave i think i don't know how old you all it was but I, I basically grew up in the 90s and still the, the the murder rate hasn't hit what it did in 91 um and right. how many of my <laughs> friends that were killed growing up as a young teenager here in chicago yeah, you know right. what i'm saying but i'm just saying i mean and i wasn't always I wasn't always the best part of myself because I don't want to. I wasn't always kin like I'm that kin now. I wasn't always a part of myself that women found engaging or attractive. I can I can remember like my junior year in high school. I think it was just because I really started getting in outside of school and the girls in home. I mean pheromone ways can kind of tell when you switch up when you you getting it in. I remember coming back junior year and girls looking back at me at the class like I just didn't know and it was because that's something I was getting it in. And clearly I was giving off something different than I was giving off when I was not getting it in. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? And, but still, like, you got to, like, I, I, mean, I feel sorry. Cause, and not in a bad way, because I'll say this. I know from the past hearing about these kids not having sex, it was about that they didn't feel like they were going to be pressured into sex like we felt, like we were when we were younger. Because if you weren't really having sex when we were younger, something was wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's how we viewed it. That's not and it's not fair to view it like that. But that's how it was viewed. And if you was getting it in, you was looked at as being a, a hero or a big man on campus. And this, they let, don't let you be getting it in nice. Then it's like, you know, it's urban <laughs> legends built off of you or whatever. You know what I'm Look, saying? Everyone, it's get it in, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. So I, I can't see. I, I know times change, but look, all these. Uh, I'm sorry. To say yeah, that. Let me let me throw all these little heifers ain't getting give getting to the money bag, daddy. Like, hey, shout come out to on now. Shout out to Pedro yeah. it. He says, "Trust me, these young girls are chasing the bag." Shout out to Pedro putting in that work for the chat here. We love you put on uh, coming in tonight for us here, Pedro. Um, Ken, the guys here. This is crazy how we're talking about all these things here, but. Let's just be honest. We are living in a polygamous society. If you think about it or not, one out of four black women are married. But how many single women do we have out here who have single child, who are single parents to multiple men? But when I said that 10 to 20 percent of the men in this country are having sex and how many single women are having multiple babies by multiple men? We don't want to look at it that way, but we are technically living in a polygamous environment, whether you agree or not, just by looking at the stats and how many single women out there and how many men. How many men they are sharing. I can't touch that right now. <laughs> oh man, come on! I mean, from wow, the, John, I mean listen, John, I mean, listen. John, polygamy. John. I'm saying polygamy. I mean, like I'll put it like this: it sounds good, uh, but being a parent, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a father. I have a girl. I mean, I have a boy and a girl. Um, even if I just had my son, I don't necessarily know if I would want him to grow up in that type of environment because of what how. It may form his views, and I mean, I'm, and also, I'm I'm naive and ignorant to 
polygamous relationship. So I'm mm-hmm. sure well, I'm someone not that in that I'm just saying that when you yeah, I know you're saying that people are doing it and they're not even open. It's, it's not recognized. really it's not yeah, being recognized. A, yeah, polygamous it. relationship. If, if a woman has three kids with two different men and yeah. she's still having sex with the one man and right. knowing that he's with his other baby mom, we see it all the time. That is technically a polygamous relationship, and that is happening over and over and over again. Hey, like she said there, polygamy without permission, I mean, it technically is with permission because you're okay with it. Mm. You, you, I mean, everybody's okay with it to a degree. I'm putting I, themselves I, I, in this situation. Like, see, again, this is me. I don't know if you, you fool can. Um, at about 17, 18, I realized I don't like girls that like drama. And I really never dated really. I only had one kind of, but I really didn't date with girls with drama. It wasn't one of those things where after I knew like, nah, this isn't the type of stuff to like to go, go, go through. Like, how are you setting yourself up to be in these, these situations? I have not dated formerly anybody that I know of at the time that had multiple baby daddies. Let me say this too. Now, just because you have multiple baby daddies doesn't mean you're in a polygamous relationship without permission. But just saying, but to go with what you were saying, I don't know if I've been in that situation and I don't know if I will put my, like, you can take yourself out of situations. You know what I'm saying? Like, but again, that goes to options and coming into this and learning from what you guys are saying. Cats don't have a lot of options. So you may have to deal with the polygamy because, man, it's it's dry out here in the streets is how what you guys are informing me right now, man. It's a lot of dry uh, lowers. Like you mentioned about the sixties and how bad Chicago is. Uh, Dry Lawrence? Johnny, you get the, you get the, I say Lawrence, but I do you I, Johnny changes you feel the vibes. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> need the hashtag that bro. For real. Dry loins. Dry loins. Dry loins. <laughs> the, yeah. I man, this has been great to have you on here with the, with this talk here. We're going to transition now. So, uh, JD, I'm going to do our load for anything but for people in the chat. We're not going anywhere. It's going to be like five, ten second little delay here, and we're going to get right back into it here. So, this is going to be our anything but for reason why we had Ken on here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Anything But, the show that has celebrities talk about anything but the thing that makes them famous. Tonight, we have host of NBC Sports Chicago Bears Under Center Podcast, Flippin' Friends, The That Davis Show, and co-owner of WeAreRegalRadio.com. Tonight's special guest on Anything But is none other than Kenneth Davis. Welcome to the show, Ken. And are you ready to talk about anything but the chicago bears <laughs> for sure but i'm not a, i'm not a celebrity let me leave with that i'm not a celebrity i mean you are a celebrity sir you are okay. I, I, okay. I i i listen to you weekly i've seen you on tv multiple times like you you gotta you gotta I claim your that. celebrity status sir take it in ken i'm good i'm good off that i'm good off that <laughs> You don't want you don't want that ken <laughs> nobody wants that ken all right <laughs> But I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, JD. Okay. So basically, I'll break it down for everybody who hasn't seen this before. We have a set of interesting, diverse, unique questions that we're going to ask him that will give him an opportunity to show who he is as a person outside of all the things that make him famous. So um, if you like the show, if you like what we're doing on here, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. So that you don't miss any of our shows or our live streams. Ken, your, your comments from the show before was amazing. So I, I, everybody who's watching this right now, please go back and watch the live screen, the live stream where we talked about relationships. So um, with that being said, we'll jump into anything but. So I'll go ahead and ask the first question. If you got into a fist fight, sir, with some random who just walked up to you on the street and you had somebody from you know, the, the various different things you do, you know, the under center podcast, um, the Ed Davis show, who would you want to fight alongside you, sir? All right. So I guess under center Tony Gill producer over at NBC Chicago has been, who we had brother. on the show. <laughs> Yo, you had Tony on the show. I oh, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, so oh, Tony, yeah. Tony has been my brother for years now. 
So I know he would give it his all, but Eric Strobel, and we haven't had the opportunity due to the pandemic to physically be in the same place with one another, but clearly I know he's a large male. Uh, he may be able to, to, to back me up in the ways that I need to back up. And then you have Adam Hogue. Adam seems scrappy. It's AF. Can y'all curse on me? I, don't, I didn't want to come on here and be disrespecting y'all. Yeah, first show, we can't curse this one. You say whatever the fuck you want to say. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Big Scra facts. Scrappy is, I, scrappy I, I, is didn't, I didn't hear shit what you just said just then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's, I would say, probably I would lead off with Tony and then Eric uh, from Under Center Podcast is who I would lead off with. Okay. Okay. I, I can respect that. I can respect that. I mean, I look around this room of, of my friends and um, I don't really know if I want to pick any of y'all, but you know. <laughs> we, 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 we got Johnny D. Johnny D ain't knocking them of us out. No, nah, actually, actually, I would pick these guys. They would, they would go to bat for me. I was just kind of fucking with everybody. The dude, the, I, I the can dude think of a time. Him, I can think I of a time. Jeff got the fisherman's cap on, but he seemed like he's stabbing. <laughs> he's stabbing man in the second if need be. <laughs> yeah, I'm one. Of, I'm one of them cats that I'm a real, real nice guy. But you cross me. You seem, you seem <laughs> shank. You seem shank worthy, Jeff. Like oh. <laughs> Shake worthy, like oh, for real, for real. I can I can think of a time, you know. I hope this ain't this ain't too much putting this out there, Johnny Dangerous. But uh, me and you and the DR almost got into a scrap. Once, once. Oh, <laughs> not man. a DR scrap, not a Dominican Republic, scrap. <laughs> not a foreign paper scrap. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a thing. People was uh. So you know, out there, but we're gonna move on. This, this is about you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is about you. I like the I've been in the DR. I, I like Dominican store. Was it some racism? What was going on down there? Nah, man. Okay. Nah. Because um, you know, some of those Euros come over there and they feel a certain kind of way about themselves when you uh, yeah. just, no, uh, it was just you know, it's just people hating, people hating, you know. And I I mean, like, I, I get it, I understand. We was out there living our best life, so I guess right. that brings some some hateration with it, but um. You was know. it the locals or somebody else that was on the resort? No, nah, it was it was it was some locals. It was yeah. some locals. So I, I understood it. I understood. No, but I know we disrespected locals, but we didn't get into it with them. We just <laughs> we just ran through their hood disrespecting them like it was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that we blatantly disrespected. We we just by proxy disrespected because <laughs> we uh <laughs> we, we had uh, we had so. some some benefits that um monetarily that they probably didn't have but um th this ain't about us this ain't about us yeah yeah give me I, I, interview, right, right. I interview people you know it happens, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's, let's go to dave what you got sir all right ken let me ask you here who was your biggest celebrity crush as a kid all right so i had to really think about this because it's so hard to really go back and think i would have to lead off with tatiana ali Oh, uh, when I was a kid, good choice. Good uh, a, a, a little bit also Stacy Dash from Moving with Richard Pryor. All right, oh, wow. and um, maybe you like era. <laughs> you got to be a certain era. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That that was yeah. I would I would say that would probably encapsulate it because I don't know how old I was when like Tabank Topanga was on Boy Meets World. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, so I don't know if I was. I mean, I was still a teenager or whatever, but like stuff like that probably was. The vibes and all you know, you used to have all of the, the, the Megan Gomez's and all you know, sending the, 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 the sisters on those shows who I had an affinity for. But Tatiana Ali, because I ain't know that Hillary was was bad because I was a kid and I wasn't really always looking to like the yeah. fully developed people. But yeah. when I got like when I crossed over <laughs> and the Fresh Prince was still coming on, I was like, damn, Hillary. But Tatiana Ali was, was basically <laughs> my flavor. Yeah. I gotta ask though, you said Stacey Dash, so are you taking Stacey Dash now? Hell no, I'm not taking Stacey Dash. I got it. Stacey Dash would help them hold me down while they beat upon me or whatever. I said move. You see, I said Stacey Dash moving with Richard Pryor. That was where I really was like, oh, who? And I mean, I was young, young when that movement came out, like probably like 88 or something. Yeah, 87, 88. Yeah, so I mean, I was. I wasn't even she's in double digits. For, she's asked for forgiveness. She wants the black community nah, back. You so you're not, you're not you know, I'll tell you this too. I can't, I can't, I'll listen to it, but I can't compartmentalize. I mean, uh, Kanye, I can't, uh, because I'll say this real quick. I think all of us, and I don't know where you guys grew up. Um, I grew up here in Chicago when I was a teenager until when I was in my early twenties, the cops used to pull me over. Like it was, uh, some type of festival or something. And when you make it seem okay that this type of stuff happens and then you embolden racism in these ways, and I've been treated really nice by some white cops and black cops, 
but it's just something you shouldn't play with. So it's hard for me to compartmentalize your art from you doing stuff that can harm harm young black kids. Um, uh, because I've been in that situation and I don't I just don't play when it comes to our people like that. So sure. basically saying that she's ugly right now, but she was fine back in the day. I, well, first of all, I shouldn't say she's ugly. She hasn't been attracted to me since before she's she came out. She's ugly on the inside. No, no, I said no. Physically, <laughs> I haven't found her as attractive. And again, oh. I'm sure in my old age, she may not find me attractive. But also, good. We we grow older. You're not as sexy as what you once. Yeah, I can sometimes. see that. Yeah, there's people who you like. You look at you look look at them through a different lens as you right. Get older. You look, it's yeah. not you, listen. Some people it's different. Pat, uh, older Patty Labelle to me looks better than the younger Patty Labelle. Not to say the same about Angela Bassett. I don't know what it is about Angela Bassett. I mm. like Angela Bassett from the last decade actually a little bit more than I like her from the, the hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I like some about her now. I'm like whoa. Yeah. So, but but still, when it comes to Stacey Dash. Physically, you know, age has hit us. So I don't want to diss it, but like you're saying, one, Yitzin, your karma, your attitude, it reflects in your your beautifulness. Like, like you said, are you nasty on the inside? Like that's if, if someone who is really nice on the inside, it radiates. It's just the truth. Absolutely. They can be a person that a lot of people may not find attractive. That doesn't seem that that doesn't mean that you will be with them, but you will gravitate to them because you like the vibes. I agree. Hey, real quick, Topanga. Back <laughs> in my military days. Hey, back hey, in my you already know. Days. I'm well traveled, right? Me and my buddy drove down to Arizona to hang out with another buddy of mine. And uh, we hit up this club called The Library in Arizona. I forget what, what actual area it was in, but uh, man, we in there, we getting it in, we drinking 151. Slamming it. See this chick on top of the bar. Dancing, kicking over glasses. She got on a schoolgirl outfit. I'm like, damn. I mean, she's just grinding. Dude, I get a little closer just to get a better view. Even though I have big eyes, I have to get a little closer just to see. Guess who was on that bar getting it in? Topanga. Topanga, man. Yeah. Wow, that, is, that is legendary to say the oh, least. Oh, man, that was yeah. wild. Yeah. She ain't had no legendary. draws on either. <laughs> don't do that don't do that don't do that <laughs> now you took it to a level that now i was i was envious but now i'm, I'm uh, uber jealous like right. <laughs> uh, you, i am you, screenshotting you, this time stamp here 156 oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> i can't listen it, i can't due to the things that i do now i can't even dive deeper into that right, uh, right, right. <laughs> keep it there keep it there keep that's that right. on that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wild adventures of johnny dangerous that was one of them yeah. Now, speaking speaking of wild that. adventures, John, you might as well go ahead and do the next question, sir. Yeah. Might, might as well, huh? <laughs> yep. Ken, who is the most interesting person that you have ever met? This is the hardest question. I did everything else. All these questions just dang, 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 dang. I had to come back. I went and looked at people I interviewed. And that doesn't mean that I had to interview them to meet them. I, I don't I don't really have the answer to this, but I did come up with a couple answers. I'm going to go off top and say Craig Hodges, former Chicago Bull, and then uh, Stevie Vaez, executive di director of the Chicago Action Fund. Um, and these were two people that were doing they were they were doing it for the people. And it's someone who who sacrifices for themselves and does stuff for the people. Um, I admire that. So uh, even if some celebrities that I've met and that's not to mean that as the tons of people that I've interviewed, I mean, no, no type of slight to you that you weren't interesting at all because i appreciate people taking the time out to allow me and even my former partner when i was in a group to interview uh, all these people but um i would say people that do the sacrifice and do the, the work the good work you know what i'm saying are the people that i'm most I, I, that i'm most interested in because um it's something that i would like to do and i haven't i've done things but i haven't fully committed to doing things so i admire those people absolutely great great answer man um yeah, i met greg hodges once before too about yeah, a you're a real one he yeah, was yeah. dancing on the bar no, too. Way. <laughs> don't you disrespect <laughs> JD? Don't you disrespect Craig Hodges? Don't hey, you disrespect yeah, Craig, Craig is Hodges. thorough. Craig is Bro, thorough, right. man. <laughs> he is so down to earth, very yeah. humble guy, man. We were conversing probably for about five minutes before I realized who he was. I said, Man, you look so just so down. He actually lives in the suburbs yeah. of Chicago. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Let me see. catching the train. Uh, 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 I've had the luck of talking to him several times. Um, loves his people. Um, love his people. Loves his people. And I mean, people to love their people, as, and particularly my people, I love them back. 
Absolutely. Yep. Yep. No doubt. All right, Jeff, on you, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who is most responsible for making you the person that you are today? Uh, my my grandmother, um, okay. Pauline Keaton, uh, my great my grand aunt, uh, Mary Washington, and my father um, are the most important uh, people. I um, they were all these all these people from Alabama, and my father had me when he was thirty five, so he was an older dad. Um, so I'm kind of older than my age to a certain degree because I grew up in a house with these old Southern people, you know what I'm saying? Um, but they are the reason that they brought the calm to my city ratchetness that if I didn't have it, I probably would be in jail hmm. or have been in jail. I should say I probably would have been out by now. <laughs> yeah, that's real, man. Yeah, that's great that you had those influences like that to keep you on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Well, I didn't I think, want to let them down too. That was a, the large yeah. thing was even when I got in trouble, I wouldn't yeah. let them know. I remember this one time, uh, this cop pulled me over and I started talking spicy and he took me in and, um, he was like, you gonna call your family. I'm like, I'm not calling nobody. You're gonna let me go in the morning. I'm just gonna tell them I spent the night with somebody's house. And I remember this girl <laughs> came to the police station mm -hmm. and she was like, just go over there and fake. Like you're going to call him and he's going to let you go. And I went and faked. And the cop let me go or whatever. But I didn't, I didn't, I remember my father talking about my great grandmother, Daisy Washington. And because my great grandmother raised my dad, like it's funny, my grandmother kind of was my mother. My my father's great, my great grandmother was my father's mother because my grandmother was moving around with her second husband who was in the military. And my father was in Alabama with her and my grandfather, my great grandfather. And he did, he told me he didn't want to let Daisy down. And the same thing with my grandmother. Um, I didn't want to really. So even if I was doing something I wasn't supposed to do, I didn't let it really come back to the house because I didn't want them to to feel like I was letting them down. That's I think having those multiple generations in the household <laughs> is one of the things that's lacking with, uh, you totally know, agree. families and relationships with, uh, you know, young adults these days anyway, man. And I know I, I, I can I, I can speak for myself. And I knew that I grew up in a house where, you know, I had my mom and my dad with me and my sister but right next door to me was my grandma the other side of that house was my aunt so it was like you know it, it those types of relationships between family members are are rare these days and i think that you know especially in our community i think our community suffers because of that i'll say this too to pile a piggyback on that another problem is older people don't want to be older people Mm. So, you know, a lot of people don't want to be called grandma. And I'm not even yeah. putting on the name of grandma, but the actions of grandma. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, like a lot of people, regardless of even if you still have those other generations, they're still too busy trying to live their life. And that's not to say you shouldn't live your life. But like, I don't know. I, I don't get it because I was raised by people from the South. So mm -hmm. it, I know that I have to serve. So I know that, for instance, like. I'm, I'm never I, my my job in my life is never to spend. An, I mean, of course, I can spend a night out, but I mean, if I was traveling, but never like to spend a night out away from my kids. Like, I, and again, I'm not dissing anybody that's not in the house with their kids, but I have to be. You know what I'm saying? Because just it just feels like the cold. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, and they could be 70 years old, aren't living by the cold. Man, that's yeah. so true. So yeah. True. That's because grandma's now like. Uh, 29 years old, you know what I'm saying? Right. She wanted to, she want to throw it back in a circle. She want to throw yeah. she want to out for her daughter. And what, yeah, what the issue is, I, I seen a mama hold a baby, put her hand on her car. I forgot that little John saw for back on. in the day. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, grandma's a freaky. Listen, we've all dealt with a freaky grandma in our life or two that was in her 40s or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no cop. <comment. laughs> <laughs> Everybody got real quiet. Yeah. <laughs> that, might, that might be a dark show conversation we might have to have here. <laughs> we had to have to burst that topic. 40. <laughs> yep, we go to that one too. <laughs> Just not on this show, and exactly. preferably one where I'm not on too. So, Anything uh, but right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anything but that. <laughs> Emphasis on the. Oh, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> all right dave it's it's on you sir man okay you in the lottery ken what's the most ridiculous thing that you're gonna buy probably a homestead off the grid a home mm. off the grid 
Yeah, like I mean, because if I win the lottery, I can make sure yeah. that it's fully powered. Yeah. You know, I got solar, I got wind. I got hopefully I have a well that's not poisoned by fracking. Um, <laughs> I want some right, place. Right. I want some place that in case the bomb hit. But my team is secure. Um, also, just in case, just I don't want to be controlled. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, you so go I don't want on us here. I didn't hear you. What you said? You can go incel on us here. No, I wouldn't be. Oh. I would still. I would still. <laughs> I would still. Look, I, I also put you Villa. He, also put Villa here too. It'd okay. be one of my spots, but it still <laughs> would be that I have my 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 spot in case it gets yeah. real randy yeah. out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but uh, I mean, like, I I want I want that. I want my own piece of land that no no agency is providing me with anything. I don't have to answer to anybody, and I'm totally self sufficient. I can dig that. It's a wonderful answer to that question. That is, man. That 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 makes me kind of want to change my answer. I was just gonna say, I so I, I want a house with a pool. <laughs> controlled by the man right <laughs> in the man's water okay, would you go to africa and buy a piece of land where akon's building that city he's building my, Akon we, world you know whatever every time i mention that to my friends they tell me not to trust it um i would <laughs> i would own land i would own some land in africa but see the only thing about that is my familiarity with the governments with who, wherever I am, who's the man? Akon. Do what? What exactly? So how do I have to placate to Akon, right? And then right. how long does how long does that protection? How long does that protection last, right? Yeah. Like yeah. in the last thing, listen, I don't want to get, I, and I, 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 I have, I, I have many friends that are first generation Africans. My first best friends, like two doors down, were Nigerian. Like I, I had a lot of Nigerian friends and some Ghana friends and some Asian friends growing up, but I ain't trying to get machete. All right, it's just facts. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be facts. They will they wield those machetes man. in a different path. They will those machetes in a different just like the feet game from soccer. Like you like you know how we grow up. You know, you come up on a cat that's playing some soccer, you gotta you gotta change your whole format on defense. All right, because his his feet game is totally different from what you used to. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I don't, I don't trust I don't trust anybody with the, the name Akon in their name. I mean, he, 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 he a con to begin with. Hey, con. <laughs> con with a K. Right. He right. got his own crypto coming out too, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah man. man. That's gonna be part I ain't buying it. That's going to be part of the currency in Africa. <laughs> Wow, man, it, he got he got a lot of big ideas, man. I I, I oh, really hope that he's successful. 2025. If the city's going live in 2025. Yeah, and, and Akon, if you watch it, we can have you on anything but so you can't talk about your city <laughs> or your music. Right, right. <laughs> or your music. <laughs> All right, who's up next? Who's up now? Oh, it's me. Who or where would you haunt if you were a ghost, Ken? This is a difficult one. Someplace close to water. All right. I, I don't like being landlocked. I got to get one of these midland oceans that we got in our backyard uh, or by on the coast. Um, but the problem is this with this, because I, 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 I'm trying to stick to the to to exactly what you're asking in this question. Hunt gives off the the, the messaging that it, it's like um, I'm messing with living people vibes. Right. So I would say I would say my kids or grandkids. If I wasn't like some type of poltergeist or something, okay. right? But it feels like you're making me into a poltergeist. <laughs> so I would say I would probably haunt some racist people who live <laughs> next to by the water. Some get back. <laughs> yeah. get and then back. Like, I could haunt them and then I could go watch the sun come out and then be like, oh. all right, I'm about to go haunt their asses some more. Like, you know, it would probably be a situation like that if I had, but if it wasn't like I was a specter or a poltergeist. I would want to be able to protect my kids and my grandkids. Hey, see, that's, go ahead, John. I'm sorry. I was going to say, kid, kid. Hey, the folks be uh, like, hey, it's a good day to get out here, Jasper. Go skinny dipping. They get no, the water. Can't be the joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you wouldn't want you wouldn't want that. And you wouldn't want that type of smoke right there. But if, if, if I'm a poster, guys, I'm probably going to haunt some racist people. I mean, I'm a. I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a mess some racist people up probably. Yes, go on those damn waters. I'm protect my own. I'm protect oh my big black own. <laughs> I, I, well, maybe or maybe it's like I, you know what I don't. You, I, that's such a deep conversation. I would want to say maybe a police department, but then it's like I'm letting I'm letting young I'm letting young I'm letting young brothers off. I may want to just haunt like 
up and down the annals of Stony Island and protect the east side from some <laughs> man, you know so it man, it's a lot of different so then you'll be like, candy man oh, yes yes <laughs> skin folk skin folk can catch that haunting too if they just doing a disservice to us yeah. so it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of people that I would probably want to haunt given the abilities to haunt someone I, I'd be a, I'd be a freak <laughs> I, I'd be a freaky ghost, straight up. Oh, hey, no, man, you, you, you no, you a rapist ghost? Yeah, yeah I'm say, you gotta be careful with that, man. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he got that scary movie, too. Like, you, just like, I'm gonna be out here straight taking it. Like, no. Nah. Like, oh my God, it's cold. Got, it's cold. It's cold. Yeah, that's it's, me. It's, Hey, <laughs> oh, ghost, I swear you can have it as long as you just wait 90 days. <laughs> <laughs> 90 nights. <laughs> 90 nights. That's not like a movie. That's not like a movie. I know, right? right 92 there. days go by, you Freddy Krueger, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> 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 Oh man, oh, like I, we, I skip, feel... we skip. I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Yeah, we, no, skip the question. we skip the question. Yes, oh, my bad. My yeah, bad, my yeah, bad. yeah I, get, I got oh, one. Got, I got don't one. do my dude Jeff like that. My bad. Yeah, yeah. My I ain't bad. do my dude my Jeff bad. like that. Thank you, boy. <laughs> Where's my Catch your ass in the child line, put you down in the dirt. <laughs> down in the dirt. Down in the dirt. All right. Oh man, what we got here? If you could be in any movie or TV show, what would you be in? Um, my first thought was it have to be something action, and I go through thinking about all these action. Movies. It'd probably be something in Marvel, mm -hmm. or if it was a TV show, it'd be like Get Up or Highly Questionable. Oh, okay. Hmm. Like that will be that would I would love to do. I would love to do one of those type of shows. Um, but if I was acting, I would want to start off doing some action stuff. Just yeah, it just seem like it's live. I want to yeah. do the live stuff, and yeah. it makes seem like they make a lot of money too. I like money, and you know a little bit. Oh yeah, any of those franchises, man. You be attached to one of those, you set. Yeah, yeah that's that's set. what I was gonna say. If you if you could somehow find yourself in a Marvel movie, you might be able to, you know, parlay that into the next fifteen years of movies. So, <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's 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 the way to go about doing it, right there. Exactly. exactly. I mean, but you, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to go back to to co star in that movie with Stacey Dash. <laughs> <laughs> you can't like again. Listen, I, I don't want to take away from anybody. Uh, and their views of anything, but when it when it gets to the point where you are um, playing up something just to make somebody else like you, it's very dangerous to me. I mean, mm -hmm. because I, I feel like over the last past four years, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, you got to be honest with knowing that there's a lot of mess has been emboldened, and oh, us yeah. being at the <laughs> us being at the bottom. Um, you know, this emboldening some people is a lot more dangerous to us than it is for a lot of other people. Yeah. So when 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 skin folk do stuff like that, I just I just don't play around with it. And I'm not I'm not a um, paramilitant Davis, you know what I'm hmm. saying? But there's nothing wrong with loving my people, and there's nothing wrong with saying that somebody shouldn't be putting my people and not 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 me as much now compared to when I was younger. But I worry about these young people, and so that's just I, I don't. With her doing that, I just don't play those type of games. And maybe I should be more forgiving, but at this point, I'm not. I feel it. I feel it. Um, and I think we've come to our our marquee question of the night, which always goes to Mr. Johnny Dangerous and his uh, Morpheus impression. And this is a – I think this is a different blue pill and red pill question than the one that we were discussing earlier. But uh, go ahead. Take it away, John. All right, Ken. You ready for this, man? I'm going to give you my little uh, low high budget version of uh, Morpheus here. Okay. Ken, the blue pill or the red pill? The blue pill allows you to change one thing from your past, and the red pill allows you to alter one thing in the future. Which one and what would be the change? All right. So my um, initial reaction, one, I don't want to change anything that happens in my past because it got me here. I feel like if I alter my past, I may not get the same exact two kids. It's not to say that my kids aren't flawed, but I love these two kids. I don't want anybody else's kids or another version of hmm. my kids. You know what I'm saying? I want these two kids because even if sometimes they get on my nerves, they're mine and I don't want to change that. You know what I'm saying? And their mother. You know what I'm saying? Like just I wouldn't want to alter that because I feel like that I've been fortunate uh, in that. Also, Going in the past, I could say that I would want to bring my dad back. I was very close with my father. Um, I actually found him when he passed 
Um, but then I would have to go through losing him again. I've thought this for like 20 years. Like, I don't think I would really want to do that because I don't necessarily know how long my dad would live if I brought him back. So mm-hmm. it's one of those things of like, I brought your ass back and your dad three years later. Like, <laughs> even though I would have those three years, it was like, it took me, it took me so long. I didn't even know the clout that I was under. I was functioning, but I didn't know the clout that I was under from my father passing, right? So again, I wouldn't really want to do the red pill. Uh, but the blue pill, I, I mean, it, it sounds good to me, the blue pill, as far as changing my future and being able to set. I mean, everything's about setting your family up. But I'll say this uh, and, and really thinking about it. Last year, my younger brother passed from cancer and he has a 11 year old, a three year old or maybe a three and a two year old, but a four year old and a three year old. I would I would even if it's not what I would do for myself, I would definitely take the red pill to bring my little brother back for his family. Blessings, man. Yeah, blessings and condolences, brother. Yeah, Definitely. Sure. Yeah, man. <clears throat> you know what what's 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 uh what's crazy about life is that our experiences, uh good and bad, is what forges us into the people we are today. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm so glad that you highlighted the fact that uh because of your experiences and your children and life, you are who you are today, and you uh respect that you love that uh and you appreciate that and i think a lot of people need to understand that no matter where they are in life their experiences are are what's got them or what's brought them to where they are today and if people can just hold on to that and realize that and learn to love themselves i mean man you know tomorrow's another day you know i'm saying a day to improve a day to get better you know so man, that's beautiful thanks for sharing that brother I appreciate Absolutely. everything you saying that. That's facts, man. That's facts. Everything you said is facts. Yeah, sure. Jay Dizzle, you on mute, bro? <laughs> oh, oh, oh! There we go. We yeah, can there we go. You. All right, man. That, that was super amateur. Okay. Um. So <laughs> basically, we're gonna end the show right now. Um. And Ken, man, it has been an honor to have you on the show, bro. And um, to have you on for the extended show to hear your your views on our, our past topic that we talked about um, with relationships and to have you go through the gamut of questions that we threw at you on anything but. You handed them all like a champ. Um, I don't know if anybody else will be able to do it as good as you did, but if you had to suggest or call out one of your peeps to be on here, who would you call out, sir? Well, initially... I wrote down Tony Gill, which you told me he's been on here already. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Mm-hmm. Had a blast. And, yeah. and then I thought about a couple other people. But after I started watching the show, the only person that I could say for sure is two people. Let me say it's two people. But if you you got to go <clears> in this order if you can go in this order. It's definitely my former co-host from Dia Davis, Demas Burrow, because you guys are going to have so much fun with him if you bring him on here. If you think you had a good time with me, you're going to have a good time with him because okay. uh, he fits with this. Because I wonder, like, it was funny watching y'all. I was like, man, Herbie brought me, Herbie, Herbie brought me into this. And it's like, oh, Herbie, no, you you with you with the fuck shit, right? So <laughs> <laughs> uh, you always, you always down for. So I would say because with relationship stuff with whatever, but my my former co-host of Maz, you guys would definitely have a great time uh, with him. And uh, also, I'll say this person too, um, perhaps uh, Brandon Pope from the CW Chicago. Hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Brandon, All right. All right. Yeah. Hook, hook it up. Make it happen. Just, I mean, just, I'll, just pass I'll, the word I'll, along, you know. Okay. I guess that's how this works here. Because I got that night, I got a text. It was funny. I woke up. I woke up and I thought it was one. I woke up <laughs> foggy eye and I looked at the, the box of the cable box I'm like it's one. And I look at my phone and Herbie DM me. And he's like, I mentioned you on this show. I'm like, damn, it's one o'clock. I'm like, no, nah, it's 11. I was like, cool, Herbie, fine. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. And then JD, you hit me the next day. Uh, but I'm not always on my Twitter. So I don't think it's like I'm not paying attention. Oh, no I doubt. just, no doubt. I'm not missing social media like that. You know what I'm saying? Necessarily. But yeah, I'll definitely uh, let them know. You know what I'm saying? That, you know what I'm saying? I, I mentioned them and that this is some fun times. And to come and join you, brothers, and, and kick it up and toast it up. Thank yeah, you. man, much love. We we really appreciate you for uh, coming on and vibing with us, like we said before, man. Um, 
now's your opportunity to to drop everything you got going on right now so that everybody watching can uh follow your social medias and know exactly how to get in contact with you and be able to uh see everything that you got going on so go ahead all right so um definitely check out that david show some of you may have seen it during the chat you know saying that's my independent show also to flip but we don't do that as often, um, somewhat similar to this. But uh, we don't do that one as often. But uh, definitely under center podcast for NBC Sports, especially with the football season k- kicking off with the Bears. Yeah. Um, I guess a, a, a couple weeks ago, I interviewed Matt Nagy, and a lot of people ran with it. Um, but, Great interview. You know, just, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? But um, that, I, those are the places. You can follow me at That's Davis. You can find my podcast anywhere where podcasts can be found. Um, definitely, I always appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I always in the show saying, don't do nothing stupid until you hear from us again. Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like like I said earlier, man, um, amazing having you on. I appreciate um, it. This has been anything but. You are watching Jump Off Live. You can find us every Wednesday, 8 p.m. till whenever at this point um, on YouTube, also on Zingo TV app, channel 250, I believe it is. Um, you can follow us on all social media platforms. Um, by searching for Jump Off Live. And um, that's pretty much it. So for JD, Johnny Dangerous, that dude named Dave, and what's the other guy over there? (laughs) Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Oh, yeah, Jeff, Jeff. Jeff Blacksmith. This is anything but. And much love to you, Ken, for, for rocking with us, sir. Back at all of you. Back, 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 back